So are there any <laughs> are there any public speakers? No, I don't think so. <laughs> so we will now go into closed session where we will discuss 2.2 certificated public employee appointment employment blah 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 54957 2.3 classified public employee appointment appointment employment government code 54957 uh, 2.4 negotiations updates, 2.4 public employee discipline dismissal release, 2.5 existing pending anticipated litigation, 2.6 ratify workers compensation claim, 51069101150, and 2.7 Tuki? Tucci. Yeah, I said. Tucci Learning Solutions, non-public agency, public supplemental service agreement, two cases. Okay, to close session. If you can wait to talk a little bit later. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> We're going to call to order our meeting for Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. <clears throat> and we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I can't think of somebody new to do it today. Let's see. We did it last time. You did it last time. <laughs> she can do it again. Well, well, Jen, why don't you do it, Jen? I don't know. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think the flag was over there before. <laughs> we, we we went the wrong. We were Saluting to the wrong flag. <laughs> okay. Tenemos traducciones con este Virginia. Sí, es la misma. Este, si necesiten ayuda, se puede conseguir los aparatos, se puede decir, para poder oír. <laughs> Gracias. <coughs> y también, um, si quieres hablar con algo en la agenda, hay que agarrar una tarjetita y darlo a Eva. So if you want to speak on the agenda, you need to fill out one of those little cards and give it to Eva. There she is. Raise your hand. There's Eva. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to ask I'm going to ask now for the superintendent comments. OK, great. Thank you. Well, welcome back to the new school year. Um, we look forward to build off of our current successes this year's. And you can see it on the screen. This year's district wide campaign is all in every day. And this campaign is focused on our relentless advocacy and service as a PVUSD family to engage in work that accepts and supports a belief, commitment, and passion that all, all students can. And we intentionally left it at that. They can, because they can do anything. Um, every day I visit sites and departments and I see both classified and certificated staff engaging with students in impactful and meaningful ways. Thank you to the staff. Um, bienvenidos a un año escolar nuevo. Esperamos continuar construyendo nuestros um, éxitos actuales. La campaña de este año para todo el distrito es con ganas todos los días. Y esa campaña se centra en nuestra obligación y servicio como familia de PBUSD para participar um, en un trabajo que acepta y apoya la creencia, el compromiso y la pasión que todos los estudiantes pueden. Y ahí paramos allí porque pensamos que pueden hacer todo. Cada día que visito escuelas y departamentos veo personal clasificado y certificado um, con acciones inter interactuando con los estudiantes de una manera impactante y significativa. So part of the All in Everyday campaign will focus on students attending school daily. 
hear that? Guys, you probably do already. Um, we know that frequent absences not only mean less instruction and learning for our students, but also include missed opportunities for intervention, reteaching, social emotional supports, and enrichment. Our connection with students matter. And we have a saying that we have on back of some of our t-shirts. You teach one child and you are a hero. Teach hundreds and you are PVUSD. So parte de esta compañía con, con ganas todos los días se concentra en que los estudiantes asisten a la escuela todos los días. Sabemos que la, las a, ausencias frecuentes no solamente significan menos instrucción, pero también aprendizaje para los estudiantes, sino que incluyendo oportunidades perdidas de intervención. Um, apoyo socioemocional y enriquecimiento. Nuestra conexión con los estudiantes se importa. Enseña a un niño y serás un héroe. Enseña cientos y eres PBUSD. So we are excited about our recognition of being named part of the League of Innovative Schools. It's too bad you guys didn't win one month earlier. I would have put you in my video. Um, <laughs> it was a rigorous application process. We are one of only 16 California school districts and the first in the county to be a member. So estamos muy entusiasmados con nuestro reconocimiento de ser nombrado parte de la Liga de Escuelas Innovadoras. Es un um, proceso de aplicación muy riguroso. Somos solamente uno de 16 distritos escolares de todo California y el primero en el condado de ser miembro. So thank you very much. All right. Does any board members want to say something, Jennifer? Yeah. It's been a busy summer. Um, I want to first take a minute to recognize uh, one of our community members that we lost recently, Ms. Rhea DeHart, um, sadly passed away. And a lot of you knew her, um, were her students, friends, family, so my heart goes out to you for your loss. Um, I also, in interest of transparency, because that's one of the things I ran my campaign on, um, my daughter is no longer attending school here at the district. She had some special needs um, that needed to be taken care of. And my first job, as, Ms. as Michelle Rodriguez says, is to be a mom first and then board member second. Um, so I had to take care of her first. Um, she would be sad to be missing our wonderful Aptos team, too, because this is her area of interest. And so she's going to be completely jealous when she finds out I got to see this in person. Um, and then just to follow up, SELPA, I've been in touch with Dr. Rodriguez. I have heard your community um, suggestions, complaints. I've heard teacher complaints and um, suggestions. And we hear you, and we are discussing it. We will also have SELPA be giving a presentation at a future meeting. So that is next meeting, right, 9-11. Nine, nine okay. Um, and just real quickly, I just want to recognize um, PVUSD. There was a lot of... Um, community um, interest, student interest of the school district going greener. And we are in the process of doing that. Aptos High actually uh, we've worked with. We've worked with um, a couple other schools. And there are going to be a, a vegetarian meals available online. You can just order online. You don't have to wait to go to school to see what they have. Um, we've got lots of fresh fruits and vegetables coming in. We're also reducing our waste, plastic waste, um, silverware waste, individual packets. So that is being worked on also. Thank you. Hi, Jennifer Holm, trustee for Area 7. For those of you who don't know, that's the ocean side of Highway 1 from, you know, Seacliff on down to Pajaro Dunes. And like uh, many other uh, households in this area, my family is adjusting to the start of school. My youngest is... Got all his supplies now. Um, and it was wonderful kicking off the, the start of the school year with the district breakfast. Um, I also attended the Mexico and El Corazon, and I just wanted to express my appreciation to the, you know, the other board members, cabinet, and you know, Dr. Rodriguez for you know, fostering those partnerships with other uh, organizations and agencies. Um, I attended uh, Pajaro Pride. And it's just uh, so important to recognize and celebrate the rainbow that is our community. And um, I accepted an invitation to view the setup of one of our preschool classrooms at Bradley Elementary and met with advocates from uh, Community Water Center about water safety issues. Good evening, everyone. 
Um, I also got the opportunity to attend the district white breakfast. So I'm wishing everyone uh, an excellent start of the year. And like Michelle says, let's make it our best year yet. Um, I was also heavily involved in the Strawberry Festival through different nonprofits in addition to hosting our first um, annual Strawberry Jam Race um, uh, to kick off the Strawberry Festival. It was nice to see many of our students present, our, uh, from two-year-olds to 13-year-olds, and I think uh, uh, the oldest gentleman we had was 93 years old, so we had a, an excellent turnout at that event. Um, I'm also very pleased with the Mexico en el Corazón performance and that collaboration with the city of Watsonville. Um, we do have another event coming up for which we're also collaborating with them, and that's Musica en el Corazón um, with city council member Aurelio Gonzalez. Um, we will have the Santa Cruz Symphony present and performances by various student, PBUS student groups will also be there. So if you can make it out, it would be at the city plaza on September 19th. And lastly, uh, being pretty active with the PV Pajaro Valley Foundation, we have the date set for our next fundraiser, so please save the date. It will be um, September 12th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Jalisco's here in Watsonville. It's $20 a ticket. It includes a lovely meal, um, special performances by PVUSD groups, and also uh, an opportunity to bid on the silent auction items. So hopefully we can count with your support on that upcoming fundraiser. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Aptos. Very excited that you guys are here tonight. I was hoping that we'd have you on the agenda, and here you are. So thank you, Peggy, and all the parents who are here tonight. Just thank you for all the hard work that you guys have put in to make these kids such a success. So I'm really looking forward to your presentation. I also want to comment on Rhea DeHart. Rhea um, passed away recently, and she was a board member here, and, and she also helped to found, I think, the Teachers Union, CFT. Um, I, I enjoyed Rhea very much over the years, and she'll be missed. She um, participated in our last PV PSA meeting a month ago, so I was surprised that she passed away, but we will all miss her very much. Um, I, the last thing I'll say is that I just dropped off my baby to college and for all the parents out there who are going through the same thing, um, it's a hard thing to do. And I wanna thank um, our wonderful teachers in this district for preparing my, ch my children um, for the next step. They do a great job and, um, and that's it, thank you. Good evening everyone. Um, Glad to be here, another school year. Thank you teachers, custodians, bus drivers, office um, assistants. Um, I'm excited for the school year. Um, I was at the breakfast for the teachers and everybody at the high school. It was fun. Um, I also like to say thank you to Joe and Michelle for finally getting rid of the mountain of dirt at Ye, uh, Ye Hall. <laughs> finally. <laughs> you know, um, one of the reasons why I hear I sit here is because I told the people that that was one of my concerns and issues, so I'm, I'm glad we finally got that out of the way. And just to remind everybody, next week we're having a community meeting at E.A. Hall, Tuesday, August the 27th at 7 p.m. Um, it's a meeting to decide what to do with the remaining $2.2 million from the Measure L funds, and there's a couple options you guys could take a look at but I will be supporting option A because I believe our teachers need their classrooms upgraded and I think our students um, need a, a good reason why to be happy when they go to class. And i also like to also thank um, Jennifer Shocker for your work on SELPA. I know that's a, it's a big challenge, you know, and, and I know Michelle is working on it, I know you're working on it and uh, it's, it's intense. Uh, I visited ancient Hyatt a while ago, and uh, it's, it needs, needs a lot of work, but we're working on it. But I'm right here to support you, so thank you very much. Um, let's see. What could I say? Well, so I was at the district breakfast as well. It's great to have a big breakfast before you know, we, school starts. Great to have everybody, see everybody there. Um, I also go to one committee meeting all summer long. It's the Migrant Hit Start meeting. It's with migrant parents, of course. And I love 
um, we're, we're, you know, starting starting at the beginning of the summer was when we have our big meetings. Um, so there's like up to maybe up to 30 people there at the meeting or close to that. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. In case I sound funny. Um, and it's so, for example, incredible to hear um, the representatives of their different preschools and you know, the, the representatives that are there at the meeting talk about their parent meetings when they tell us that up to 30, sometimes even 40 parents come after working in the field, after working in the field. They come to the meetings um, for Migrant Head Start, that many parents, it's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just wanna say um, I knew Rhea De Hart very, very well. We were super good friends. She, she was always at my house when I had a lot of events there. And, and I need to tell you this, she was 96 years old, and she was still the president of adult education, president of adult education. She was on the PVBSA board. She, was, um, she went to the, all the city council meetings. She would come to many, most of our board meetings. She was, I mean, she, she, she was also, for qu quite a while, not that long ago, our community member for Migrant Head Start. Um, and she came to most of the meetings. She, she loved Migrant Head Start, too. <laughs> she did. <laughs> did she? On Helica. Um, yeah, and so how many people do you know in this country, you have to say probably in this country, that are 96 year old and still completely 100% involved in the community and still, you know, do, doing things, I mean, actually being a president of adult education when, at 96. There's not that many people, I don't think so. <laughs> so, um, let's see what else I can say. So. Well, I think I've maybe said enough. <laughs> Thank you, and, and, and thanks for all the work that all of you do, and thanks for the work that all of us are doing and are going to be doing, <laughs> and including Dr. Rodriguez, of course. She's going to be the hardest worker of all of us. All right, thanks. <clears throat> so I'm going to the next part of the agenda. Um, we're going to have a very special, special, special part of the agenda right now. We're going to have the recognition of the international winners, you might say. Is that how you would say it? Yep. International winners of the, would you say mate? Mate. mate. Uh, I'm saying it like in Spanish. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, Nate Rove Championship, um, and it's our student robotics team, and we're recognizing them as <laughs> the incredible international champions that they are. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I'll start this off with a quick introduction. So first of all, good evening trustees, good evening Dr. Rodriguez. Uh, my name is Joe Manildi and I'm I have the good fortune to teach at Aptos High School and also be the faculty advisor for the Aptos High School Robotics Club and ROV team. So uh, before we begin, first of all, thank you for honoring them here tonight. I can't tell you how proud I am of these students. Well, I guess I can because I just said how proud I am of these students, I really am. And so I, before we start, I wanna say thank you to a few people few individuals and organizations that have, uh, without their support, we couldn't maintain this club, we couldn't maintain this team, and we certainly couldn't send them to an international competition. So thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, um, Susan Perez, and Robert Hoffman at the district office for their support. Thank you at our site, to the Aptos High School Boosters Club, to our principal, Peggy Pugh. Where'd she go? There she is, okay. Yes, thank you, Peggy Pugh, for your support. Um, and to our families, our friends, and our community of sponsors who've been um, without their support, we just couldn't do it. So thank you to all of them. Um, I'd also like to recognize our volunteer coaches, Mary Seamount and Victor DaCosta. If you could <laughs> wave. Okay. 
for their uncountable hours of, of, of dedication to the team and to coaching. So thank you very much. And so without further ado, and with great fanfare, the world champion, world-renowned Aptos High School, Team Scaler. Okay. And so I'm going to have them stand up in alphabetical order because I had to put them in that way in my, to remember it and get them all right down. So we'll start with, we'll start with, so we have Cameron Barrett, who's not, not here today. We have Jordan Chin, Sunwoo DaCosta, <laughs> Amelia Lovell, Keegan Martin, Catherine Walton, Jamie Walton, Jacob Sandler, out of alphabetical order, I just got that, and, and of course, Chris Whaley. I leave the mic to you. Hi, my name is Jamie Walton, and I'm the CEO of SEAL Team Scaler, Aptos High's varsity underwater robotics team. Thank you so much for having us. For an upwards of six years now, we've been competing in MATE's ROV, or Remotely Operated Vehicle Competition, which brings together teams from all around the world to build robots that can complete scientific tasks underwater. Because ROVs are such a critical part of real life underwater exploration, MATE chooses a new theme every year that reflects what actual ROVs and scientists do in the real world. For example, this past year, our theme was lakes and rivers in Tennessee. We had the opportunity to design and build a variety of solutions to problems that Tennessee rivers actually face. For example, we got to build a mini ROV inside our main ROV to investigate pipes within dams. We also got to design and program image classification systems to identify organisms and many more of our own custom technologies. We also operate as a mock startup company, meaning that we're not only gaining engineering skills, but also communication and cooperation. ROV was an incredibly rewarding experience because it taught us not only the technical skills, but the confidence to become engineers. Because for many of us, engineering seemed like an abstract concept or something that we couldn't do. But after six years of soldering wires and fabricating circuit boards, going through countless prototypes to see what succeeded and what failed, and watching every part of the ROV break and have to be fixed, we learned the skills um, to show that we really were the engineers that seemed so far off before. But on top of this, we not only learned those technical skills, but learned that communication was an essential part of the engineering process. Each of our team members took on their own uh, specification for the ROV, such as VP of software, VP of finance, and things like that. And we found that the communication between each of these different aspects of the ROV is what was truly essential for our success. And those skills in teamwork and leadership will take with us for the rest of our lives. But more importantly, the skills we learned um, extended far beyond the reach of STEM because we were a mock startup company. So we had to showcase our skills to a panel of real scientists. And those skills in marketing and also fundraising to get the money to create the ROV are skills that we can use no matter what discipline we decide to go into. Uh, hi, I'm Katherine Walton. For the past three years, our team has won the regional Monterey Bay competition and traveled to the international competition over the summer. This year, the international competition was in Kingsport, Tennessee. While we were there, we got to talk to teams from 18 different countries about how their ROV worked and how they approached the same big challenge that we had faced. We all came from many different backgrounds and had many different experiences with the program, but all of us could come together under a common interest and passion in robotics and in solving these engineering problems. By coming together and connecting over this common passion and investment in solving problems, we realized that we can um, solve problems like this if we tackle them as a global community. We don't have to wait until the distant future to solve problems like global warming, uh, space exploration, and building an underwater robot. As students, we can be part of the solution in the here and now. Um, we benefited so much from this experience that we really want to pay it forward and give everyone in the district the same opportunity to experience this program that we had. So this year we're in the process of reaching out to um, members of the district and other schools to make sure that other schools have the opportunity to benefit from this program and that we can offer our mentoring skills and advice to new teams in the MATE competition. 
we really want to make sure that every team has the opportunity to succeed in the competition and gain the skills and the confidence that we'd gotten from this program. None of this would be possible without support from the community, from our amazing mentors to support from KVUSD. So thank you so much for making this possible. Uh, now we'd like to welcome, open the floor for any questions, if there are any. Thank you so much. What did you find your biggest challenge was? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. There were a few. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We um, had some trouble with, um, Jamie here mentioned, um, making a program to identify benthic organisms um, uh, in the bottom of the pool. Um, and for a while, we had some trouble um, navigating that since a lot of it required some um, pretty advanced um, programming skills um, and learning even some new coding languages. Um, so that was one of the challenges. Um, another one of the biggest challenges was also probably the micro ROV, which um, was an especially big challenge due to the fact that we not only had to have it explore a narrow pipe but come back. And the automatic tether winder that Keegan developed was um, incredibly difficult and we had to go through dozens of different prototypes in order to get it right and have it do what it had to do. So. Well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, all I can say is I'm amazed. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say because, you know, listening to you, I'm not even, I'm not, I hate to say it at this point, I'm not smart enough to know, understand completely everything you've even said to me, um, but um, I, you know, listening to it, I'm thinking, whoa, that, I mean, you know, just even your challenges for me was like, okay, <laughs> woo, okay, <laughs> they had to do what, okay, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm, I'm just incredibly amazed. I am, I have, I have no other word I can f figure out how to say, really, except it's, it's completely amazing, and and I would say you folks are what you might call inspirational. You're very inspirational. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank we were you. So thankful that PBUSD had this program that we were able to take advantage of it. So thank you. Exactly. Yeah. I'm. 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 I'm and I'm really hoping, like you said, that other schools can. You know, under start to understand what you have done and and figure out what you and you know be eventually maybe possibly as good as you are. <laughs> that would be so cool if you had even other schools being able to do that. That's pretty cool. Thanks. <laughs> this is less of a question and more of an acknowledgement. I had the fun of walking behind you all um, at the Aptos Parade. And so what I had the opportunity to hear was the buzz that followed you in, a, in like a wake, you know, as you kind of <laughs> moved forward. And I'd hear people, you know, off to the side going, oh, yeah, did you hear about them? They did this and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, and, and so your win is certainly a win for you and the people who supported you and, and, and fostered this sense of excellence for you. But it's also a win for the community. It's also a win for, you know, having pride in our students and, you know, that that expectation of excellence is also a gift that you have given to generations of students who follow you. You've set the bar high. That's, an, that's a wonderful thing. And, and thank you for the work that you put in and for, for doing all that you did to make that happen. And for the students and for everyone who supported them. I just had a quick question. How did this group get started? I mean, were you guys like the founding? Um, so basically, the core of the group really came together freshman year of high school. So before that, we all were on our own junior high teams. And then um, once we got to high school, a lot of the teams kind of combined into one. So um, after that, it's basically been the same core group with some seniors being added on the past two years. Mm -hmm. But um, otherwise, that experience that we gained from the junior high level really carried over to high school, and then we were just able to develop our skills from there. The overall program, the club itself, has existed in the junior high and the high school for a lot of years now. I think Mr. Minoldi can talk about that a little more. 
I just um, want, I, if I could jump in just to answer your question. Um, there's, there's a teacher at the junior, at the Aptos Junior High School that should be named, and I didn't name her in, in, in my thanks, but Emily Kassar okay. has, been, and has been a huge, huge uh, reason why we have this program uh, in the first mm -hmm. place. And so uh, that's, that's, that is, she is definitely mm -hmm. somebody who's fostered like the beginnings of it. Before they get to high school, they've they've mm -hmm. already heard about. Even if they weren't a part of it, they've heard about it and been around people who've been in it. Yeah, I, I think it's cool that you guys just somehow found each other and <laughs> came up with this. So thank you very much. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well, I've been proud of you guys for many many years. Um, again, thank you to the parents who I know are integral and in helping. Um, what would you're talking to board members who make decisions about policy and oftentimes funding. What would be helpful in the future to support this kind of program, not only at Aptos, but at, Wat at Watsonville and at Pajaro Valley High School? What do you think would be helpful? Um, well, definitely um, a lot of our experience was fundraising to build this ROV. Um, so if schools were able to maybe give a small amount to getting teams started in building an ROV, that would probably be really helpful. Um, since a lot of the buying the materials um, and things like that, um, getting a head start on that at least would be um, probably really helpful in getting teams independent to get their own sponsors. How much money did you have to raise to build this product and to do your traveling? Um, we raised an initial 1500 to build the ROV, um, yeah. so I think it costed, and then we raised more after that, so I think it was around 2000 total, and then for travel costs we raised around 5000 um, that's also for the varsity team. There are some beginner teams that might be closer to um, yeah. probably 500 or 1,000 um, when starting out. Um, as the, the robots get more advanced and you compete in higher levels, um, you have to get more complex materials. But just for like the, I think you've already covered, but like yeah. the starting scout robots to kind of get the ball rolling, they usually need around 800 yeah. each, somewhere around there. So just giving that money to give some teams a start could probably snowball into something bigger into the future. And the travel expenses were actually 15000 15, is that right? 000. That was a correction. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, don't be sorry. Um, and so I know you raised money through GoFundMe because I made a donation. <laughs> <laughs> and so these um, sponsors that I see across the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're a combination of both sponsors who gave us the money to start the um, process and also sponsors who were able to give us materials. Uh, some of them also helped us with things like 3D printing and things like that. So we both um, are really grateful to those who helped us through the actual cost itself and through the fabrication as well. Mm -hmm. So we thank the sponsors that are listed here. That's wonderful. Yeah. So how did you, who taught you guys to code? Oh boy, <laughs> uh, definitely <laughs> our mentor, Victor DaCosta, um, has been an incredible resource and he really taught us pretty much everything we know. Yeah, so he's a parent basis. volunteer, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Vic, how do you know so much? <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so what is the plan to sort of deploy this model to the other schools? Who can talk to, who can speak to that idea? Um, well, one of the main ideas we had was to set up an online forum for new teams. Um, which we're starting to work on this year over the summer. Um, I tried to build, uh, started to build um, an online program on the website Slack to um, bring everyone's emails together so that new teams um, from around the district can come and ask questions from people who have more experience um, so that people on our team can answer questions and offer advice um, on anything from technical challenges to more um, team and organizational challenges. We also reached out to the uh, robotics team at UCSE, Slugbotics, who agreed to help us with this. Um, so we have their emails as well in that forum and they can um, offer advice and questions as well. Um, so we, we can offer kind of in-person help, but also that online forum. This seems like a great, um, a great initiative to try to find grant money for, Dr. Rodriguez. So anyway, awesome. congratulations, you guys. You have Thank big, you. bright futures. I think Maria Orozco has um, the final comment tonight. <laughs> My comments were around to how can we further assist in expanding and covering the cost of this program because it's, it's, 
It's one of those things where you're applying skills, learning skills, but also solving real life problems, right? Mm -hmm, and sure. um, we don't see those opportunities very often. So uh, like Trusty to Serp, I'm very interested in, in figuring out a way to expand and support programs like this, um, even starting at the middle school level, especially if that's sort of the way, uh, gateway up. So whatever we can do to assist um, all in, congratulations. I'm a very proud Mariner tonight. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. And now you're dismissed to go do your homework. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, was the thing that they, there it is, right? Wow. That's it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. All right. Pretty inspirational. That's what I have to say. Um, so now we're going to do some much you more more boring things. <laughs> <laughs> For example, <laughs> like the approval of the agenda. <laughs> Okay, can I have a motion for the approval of the agenda? Move approval. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? 7-0. I mean, no, not 7-0. 6-0, excuse me. So it's 5-0-2. Five, five, Kim's out Oh, 5-0-2. It's Kim's not here. Okay. Um, we're going to do now the approval of the minutes, and we need to approve two minutes, two days that we were, we have minutes. And so we're going to approve the um, approval of the July 10th board meeting minutes. Move to approve. <coughs> Second. Okay. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain, I believe that's the meeting where I was absent, correct? Two. We were both gone that meeting. Okay, so the then we need to wait until Kim comes back into the room. And, or is she already do it? I'll just let her know. We don't have multiple right now. Um, oh. Here's Kim. Oh. Yeah, we need you, Kim, for the vote. Yeah. So, uh, Jen, you would be voting, right? Mm -hmm. Jen, no, just Jen. I, I'm voting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm saying just we have enough to one, two, three, four. Okay. So now that we have Kim there, uh, okay. So there's just there's a lot of people who weren't there. So yeah, we need you. <laughs> okay. So I I have did I get a second? Yeah, I moved Danny second. And then Danny second. Okay. So we're gonna have those that are here all in favor. Aye. 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 Abstain. So that was it's one. It's four. Four, four zero, two one. one zero two. Okay. That's too complicated for me to figure out that one. Four zero one two. <laughs> okay. Um, now we are asking for approval of um, this is five point two, the August seventh. No, we already did that. Oh, sorry. No, we haven't. Sorry. Board meeting minutes. Okay. This is a th motion to approve. Second. Um, I will call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and that's that's um, six zero two. Six zero one. Yes, this six zero one. Okay. All those opposed. Um, <laughs> so now we're at the visitor non-agenda items. Um, so anybody that wants to come up here, you only. We have one, and it's Esther Morio. Esther. Esther Murillo. These are two classified employees as well. I have to say this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good evening, Board of Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, Cabinet. My name is Esther Murillo, and this year um, I was the uh, co-event chair for Guatemala Relay for Life. 
It was a amazing year. I want to thank PVUSD for their support. Kristen, thank you so much for all your hard work. It really paid off. The community was buzzing with the fact that Dr. Rodriguez was there. They wanted to know who Kristen was. They wanted to know who Casey was. And we had principals out there. We had students saying, hey, my principal's out here. I've never seen him here before. They were all out there walking. I'm sad that I wasn't able to walk with you, Dr. Rodriguez, from 12 to 3 in the morning. <laughs> but on Friday, I pulled a muscle. So what I did do, I don't know if you noticed, I parked my car right next to, <laughs> to the track. So I couldn't walk. By 6 o'clock on Saturday evening, I was dragging the leg, but I wouldn't go home. But it was, it was amazing. We, did a, we had an amazing year. So, but we're not done yet. The American Cancer Society gave us a goal of 100,000. Well, we reached that goal. We were so excited. But Barbie Gomez, my other co-chair, my other half, and I, we want to reach last year's goal. So last year's goal was 115,000. We're at 114,000 right now. Yeah. So I've got buckets. So oh. we'd like those of you who still would like to contribute, because we have until the end of this month yeah. to um, reach our goal. So if you'd like, please contribute. Also, we have one more last effort, and that'll be um, at Jalisco's tomorrow. It'll be from noon until closing. We have music from 7 to 9, and a part of those proceeds would go to the American Cancer Society. And then we'll be done for this year. Again, thank you so much for all your love and your support and making this year's event so exciting and wonderful. And Kristen, thank you. This lady is amazing. She went in, she, put, she set up shop, and then she says, oh no, this is too small. I need something bigger. The very next morning, she was there, I think at 5.30. She set up a bigger spot. So, and I'm like, are you kidding? This isn't the same thing I saw just on Friday night. You changed overnight. So it was, it was amazing, and it was wonderful to see all of you guys there supporting such a great cause. It meant a lot to me this year, as you guys know. So thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. So here's the bucket. Do not forget. Oh, you know, I just, let me get the, yeah. I'll, I'll, give, I'll try to go tomorrow night. Okay. And that is it for public comment. Okay. So I, I might keep going here, even though you can give them as much money as you want. Um, for with the, with the employee organization comments, employee unions, I call them. Um, so the Pajaro Valley Federation of Teachers is Ellie here. Nilly. Oh, Nilly, there you are. Nelly, I don't know about Nelly. Nelly. <laughs> Hi, Nelly. Hello, I'm here with Radhika Kirkman. She's the grievance officer. We're the new leadership for PVFT, and um, yeah, we did. Um, we didn't know Rhea um, personally. I did see her at a meeting once, um, and was pretty much in awe because my grandmother, who is 96, would not be able to be. Um, you know, at a table in that capacity and, you know, and, and contribute the way that she, you know, that Rhea did. Um, yeah, and Rhea was a founding member of PVFT back in 68. She rallied the She's teachers. She's the president of the union, wasn't and she? And later became the president. Um, the unfortunately, she wasn't on, on the, um, the, ch the charter, the original charter. I went to look to see if her name was listed on the charter. Um, hmm. That was signed on January um, 16th in 1969. Um, but she was a, a founding organizing member of PVFT because she understood the importance of teachers being in a union so that we have that collective bargaining right. And yes, she was the president of, of PVFT as well. Yeah. yeah. So she did a lot of wonderful things in education. She did. Um, yeah. So um, on the note of collective bargaining, we are hoping that we can hear back from the um, district in regards to set, um, setting up some dates to uh, get back into negotiations. So we hit pause for the summer. We're ready to get back into um, the, nego you know, the negotiation process. And it's sort of like the ball is in your court. So we'll, we're, we're ready. Um, it's wonderful to see that on your agenda you have um, 
a resolution for environmentalism. And that is important because climate change is real. And it's important that our students are, um, are their uh, knowledge and their growth is, uh, of the environment is fostered. And, <clears throat> and then just skills that would help make our environment much better, such as Mr. Minildi's group. Him, he is a teacher. He is also a member, one of our site reps for PBFT. So we're very, very proud of him and the things that he does as well. Um, and we also know that there is a new position that's on the action item list um, for the district office, and something that we um, that we have that we have had conversation about um, myself with Dr. Rodriguez. And I just would like to just make it clear that we understand when certain changes need to happen, um, but we will always advocate that it not be on the backs of the teachers which essentially is the backs of the students. So um, we are student first as well, and because we represent teachers, teachers and students are equal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is the next union there, CSA, you wanna come back up? Okay, good evening again. Esther Murillo, Chapter 132, CSEA, First VP. Well, we're excited to start the year off. Um, we've started strong. We started with a new program, new student program. Uh, we've had a few major hiccups, but we are working towards solving, resolving some of the issues that we have at, have at hand. We've made an appointment for hopefully early next week to meet with Kristen in regards to our concerns in implementing this program. It's been a little tough because it's new um, to our sites and it's caused delay in entering and dropping students, especially entering them and updating the information. It's based on um, our job descriptions of what we have access to, So, which is a big concern because everybody knows that we do more than what's on our job description. And with that said, we need access to be able to bring kids over from other sites, enter them properly with correct information so that um, their courses, their credits are done correctly. So we are meeting with the district office and making sure that that's happening. Another program that was implemented was ESCAPE. <clears throat> I'm happy to say that um, they've done a wonderful job in training us prior to the end of last year and having ongoing trainings and also very accessible. Um, every time I've had a question, I've been able to get an answer within 24 hours and sometimes even sooner than that. I've been able to come into the district office and get assistance. Um, I wish I could say the same for the other program, <laughs> but I do understand that we have s lots of schools. This impacted everybody and we need to resolve as soon as possible. And I know that that will happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, and negotiations will be starting next month. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, this, the next one is the PAVAM. Is there a manager here that would like to talk? No managers would like to get up? Okay, get up. Anybody can come. Okay. You can be the one. I'll be the one. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, hello, welcome to see me. No, I <laughs> want to say thank you um, to all of you for having our um, students here tonight. They were incredibly excited to share. And I think what, Jennifer, you talked about um, in, in your remarks to them was really important because it is really a district effort. And so as a, one of the administrators in the district, I'm, I'm proud of all of the work that our students um, have the experiences with in the classroom as well as um, in the unstructured time out on the playgrounds. They have so many opportunities and we're grateful for all of those. So thank you and we're all in every day. All in every day. <laughs> thank you. Okay, and the last one is CWA, Communication Workers of America. And they're never here. <laughs> now we're on the action items and um, Resolution that I will say that I wanted to see happen. I talked to Dr. Rodriguez about making sure that we have this resolution on the board. I did. I did. Wanted to make sure this one was going to happen. I did. 
All right, and it's and it's a really super good resolution. We've had a good one on, I think, the whole climate issue, but this one's overall really good. I think if you can read it more. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Exactly. Well, thank you very much, though. I think um, um, Member Shocker mentioned previously some of the other efforts that we're doing, and our um, President Osmondson, she did um, provide me a sample. I took that sample and um, and also looked at other um, groups, other d districts that had done it. I was really impressed with um, Lake Tahoe's version um, because it not only talks specifically about sustainability, but sustainability within a school setting and what we could actually do as a district. Um, Another thing I think that is very unique about us is the fact of where we live. And, you know, we live in the, the salad basket of the world. And, um, and so you'll see that noted on here. Um, kind of if you go to the second one, it just talks about the fact that whereas schools have the potential to make positive, tangible environmental change in the world, while teaching students to be stewards of their community, the earth, and its resources. So whether it's through like the ROV that we're doing or it is through our environmental um, literacy program. Also, it speaks to, um, if you go to the fourth one, where we're located within an internationally acclaimed and ecologically sensitive Central Coast, which provides PBUSD students a unique opportunity to learn principles and practices of environmental stewardship. So I'll say that um, me having to engage with the PVHS um, construction gave me a whole perspective on, um, on this topic with um, having things be, um, having ESHAs and having environmentally um, secure areas. And so I think um, we have a unique and very rich opportunity for our students that most students in California do not have the opportunity for. Um, and we have wetlands, too. <laughs> and we have the wetlands as well. Um, so it speaks to um, what was mentioned a, a little bit earlier in that we're recognizing, if you continue down, um, many options and, and choices exist for schools and staff to use natural resources more efficiently, to reduce, reuse, and recycle, to produce more sustainably sourced lunches, and to purchase clean energy and environmentally preferable products and supplies to protect our environment. So what we are committing to do, um, because I think that's the most important part of the resolution, is what are we going to commit to do? So we received a um, award just this past year for our energy efficiency, so we're going to continue that implementation and expansion of that plan. Um, we're going to try to rely on clean, um, renewable energy sources to power our district's facilities through solar. Um, we will assure that all new buildings and retrofits to existing buildings are environmentally sensitive. And we're going to continue the conversion, and um, Katie is here tonight, um, conversion of PVUSD buses to clean energy um, to maximize efficiencies and reduce the total um, vehicle miles traveled. Um, we're going to continue to develop infrastructure and enhance um, biking and walking school um, through Safe Routes to School program, and you, they came and presented to us. Um, we're going to implement comprehensive waste reduction, recycling, and composting programs, which we're doing a pilot with the city of Watsonville. Um, and we're going to continue to develop our school gardens and hands-on learning tools. Um, as well as drought resistant um, landscaping options, which for instance, we did at Valencia um, Elementary just recently. And we will continue to have a fairly renowned, so we go and present on this environmental science curriculum that integrates next generation science standards and enhances students, educates students on um, sustainability and energy um, literacy. And so I recommend the approval of this resolution. All right. Is there any questions from the board? <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we keep hearing it, but sometimes people don't understand that climate change is real, and we're trying to do something. Thank you. Um, yeah. Just wanted to say I'm really excited to pass this resolution. 
So it was it was fun to you know I'll read through my board packet you know as I'm sitting in my living room and it's like this one I was like yes, and I I I just think that it's critical that we model for our students and for you know the families and staff and everyone the practices and standards that ensure that our students' children and grandchildren have a healthy planet to grow up in, and I I, I enthusiastically support this. Is that a motion? Uh, no, well, I, I just want to say too that um, you know because we're in a very, very, very special area. I mean, our our slews here are, you know, in terms of research, you know, they're, they're some of the best slews in the country. You know, that we have our Elkhorn slews here, are really some of the best slews that we have here in the whole country. And the fact that we are our, we have a marine sanctuary in terms of the Monterey Bay, and we have really great connections our school and others with the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which is very special too that we have here. And um, as Dr. Rodriguez say, we are the salad bowl capital of the world, I think. <laughs> well, and we are the berry capital of the world, really. We are the berry capital of the world as well. <laughs> that makes us, our area very incredibly beautiful and an area that we have to make sure that we sustain, absolutely. We have to make sure that we can sustain such an incredibly, you know, incredible area that we, we all live in. Thanks. I make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Everyone that's here is in favor. <laughs> There's no post. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Um, so, Karen, that passed six zero one, with Trustee Acosta absent. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna we're gonna prove a lot of university stuff here, and um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do for the next few. So we're in eight point two. We're gonna approve education administration internship contract agreement with Brandman University. By Chonicaline, Dr. Chonicaline, Dr. Yes, you have to say doctor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, we're going to be here for a while because there's several HR action items. Yeah, so there is. Uh, I need all the help I can get. So we're going to uh, call on my two, our two directors from HR, our two fabulous ones, Alison Niasawa for the first few, and then uh, Pam Shanks for the latter half. Um, this first one is uh, presented uh, to the board. Um, uh, President Osmondson, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, to approve the education internship contract with Brandman University. As the nationwide teacher shortage continues, um, PVUSD works closely with several universities and recruitment efforts to fill these uh, certificated teaching positions. Um, and the universities and college interns provide a reliable and motivated source of new hires for our vacancies. Uh, Brandman is one of several universities that we contract with, and these universities include the University of California, Cal State, private colleges, because we want to leave as many options as possible um, to be able to fill the vacancies with the best and the brightest. And um, these agreements are presented to us by the universities at various times throughout the year. And as we receive them, we present it to the board for your review and your approval. So this first one is for Brandman University. OK, any comments or questions? Any speakers? No, no public, no, we don't have any public speakers at all. No. Uh, my comment is to make a motion to approve. This is no I different second. than it has come before us in years past, so great. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep, it's five zero two. Is that how we do it? Six zero one. Six zero one. God, he's having to do these. <laughs> and then the next one is another one with another university, student teaching and practicum agreement with National University. Yes, um, thank you, President Osmondson, um, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. These are standard agreements, again, um, with uh, various institutions of higher education, and each contract with each college is, is approved and resolved by the Board Trustees every year, and the contracts do arrive at different times during the year, depending on the semester configuration and student assignments. 
Um, past practice has been to facilitate these agreements for student teachers in, as it allows a district to identify and recruit um, highly skilled individuals and then we want to sign them to a contract before the other um, districts get to them and, um, and before they reach the marketplace. And again, we contract with a, a, a lot of universities and some of those were listed in the abstract, including San Jose, UCs, uh, different private colleges of Cal States. And um, this is for your approval. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. A second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 602. 601, excuse me, 601, uh, no, nobody's opposed. Um, the next one is also with National University, it's an intern credential program agreement. And Dr. Chona Kalina. <laughs> yes, um, President Osmondson, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, this is similar to the item in 8.2, except this is with National River University instead of Brandman. Okay, so you got it right. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Six zero one. I finally said it right. <laughs> okay, continues on with. I think you're going to be up here for a while. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> and this is eight point five. Is it? Am I? Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> approve the appointment of an aptos high school math teacher on variable term waiver. Dr. Chilna Kaleen. Yes, thank you. While we have made progress with filling vacancies with credential teachers, we are still need um, for board to review and approve uh, credential waivers for individual teachers. And um, I'm calling on um, Allison, um, our HR uh, director for certificated personnel, um, to present this one uh, for a, a teacher at Aptos High School because she's worked closely with the teacher and her team to ensure that we provide and uh, submit the documentation that's required to be in compliance to be able to get the, the emergency waiver. Yes. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, President Osmondson, Board of Trustees. So a variable waiver is a document issued for employees who meet the waiver criteria when a fully credentialed teacher is not available for the assignment, and it allows the district to fill the assignment while searching for a fully credentialed teacher in the subject area of the assignment and gives the waiver holder additional time to complete the requirements. So we are asking to hire uh, Lena Pine Campbell, and she is going to be a math teacher at Aptos High. She attended Humboldt and has a degree in biology. So we're asking for your approval. Okay. A question. I just had a quick question. This is, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, still fairly new. Can you just tell me, like, how um, many teachers or specialists in the district are on waivers or internships, you know, like this, and is that a usual amount? Um, I love that question. Um, it's an excellent question because it allows us to give a shout out to everybody that's helped us um, because the data is pretty, uh, pretty pretty good, in that, which we had just shared with our board. Um, it gives us allow, allows us to give a shout out to our collaboration with PVFT, the hard work of our administrators, particularly those at the sites, and also to you, um, our superintendent and the board, for your approval of a lot of incentives to let us retain and recruit the best and the brightest for our kids. And some of those in incentives that um, the board has approved, in addition to early recruitment, um, we, we do recruitment in January you know, at job fairs as well as posting them early. And some of the uh, incentives that you had approved was signing bonuses, matriculation uh, at colleges and universities for credential, um, increases in salaries, and continuation sustaining the great and health, uh, health and welfare benefits program, professional development especially by our Ed Services team and mentors. Um, a lot of you champion the mentors. Uh, we have site mentors for our new teachers um, that covers our interns, our um, STIPs, uh, short-term teacher uh, uh, waivers, as well as a provisional intern, um, uh, teachers on provisional intern permits. And um, the numbers for the um, interns is last year we had 40 interns, and this year we have 10. 
And the vast, ma we, although we had four separations from the district, the vast majority of the teachers are in on their way remaining here um, to, to reach tenure. And a lot of that is, um, you know, also work with, with PVFT because we work, uh, we meet all the time with them. Um, we have them on speed dial, um, you know, providing support with our teachers and using, and using the talents that we have. Um, STIPS and PIPS, we have kept those at single digits. And um, I think those, Allison actually had, um, we had some decreases with uh, the PIPS and the STIPS. So the PIPS last year, we had seven, and this year is about the same at eight. Um, the STIPS went from 11 to nine, so we got those in double digits. One of the other um, great statistics was the, the non-elects. Um, before I started in the district, there was well, there was close to 40 um, teachers that were, um, that received non-election notices. Um, after the first year, it was down to 14. Last year, it was four. And it is, you know, it is the great incentives and the support that we're getting as well as the collaboration. Um, we have some work to do um, because we will like to reduce the number of resignations and um, retirements as well, but those, I guess you can't um, keep them here for forever. You know, forever. <laughs> but that was a fabulous question, and I, I think you know it, it gave us an opportunity to just give a shout out because this is not a one-person show. This is an effort, um, collaborative effort by everyone. Over here, Dr. Colleen, how many um, positions remain open? I have that too. For I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> So um, right now, um, it's so, some of the numbers may be um, off a little bit because we're transitioning from one em uh, employee system to another, from digital schools to escape. So some of those things had to be manually done. But um, basically, these are pretty close. So right now, um, we have um, our elementary schools, 14 elementary schools are fully staffed. Um, we have um, a couple of schools that need uh, full-time teachers, and then the rest need some science release and reading. In the middle schools, we have Aptos Junior and EA Hall, that's fully staffed, and we do have the others that need one or two teachers. At the high schools, Diamond Tech, New School, and PV High are fully staffed, and then we have some part-time positions. Um, most of the vacancies are because we have, um, we're we're taking on CTE this year, so there's a lot of part-time positions that we're filling, and it's not going through the county. So basically, a summary of the vacancies is we have eight full-time classrooms, um, three special ed positions, three part-time CTE, one Spanish part-time, and one PE part-time. So if, um, if there are people out there in our community who, for example, have a bachelor's and a masters and maybe have a background in education but not a credential do we have a pathway in yes. to bring people in to, on one of these waivers to place them in those positions yes. and how would they go about applying um, this one and to, our team okay um, we will work with them individually to put together our stips or pips um, interns um, those are um, you know those are what we use and then um, you know they get to work for us and hopefully stay with us and uh, retain and recruit the That's best great. and the brightest. So this particular person, is this person that we're, is in front of us tonight it, uh, working on a credential? Yes. Okay. Yes. Secondary credential or something like that. Yes. Okay. Or great. Aptos. And she's qualified to teach math with a biology major? With a, if we can get the waiver, yes. If we can get the waiver, okay. She's qualified. So I'll make a motion to approve this waiver also on Lena. Is there another comment? Oh, um, just one last comment. I think the statistics that you share are pretty awesome. And I don't think the larger public knows that information. So if there's a way to disseminate and share that with a larger community, I think it will be great to do that. The other thing is, as far as you know, the professional development opportunities or even programs like this, I think it should be more publicized. I think there's a lot of community members that could potentially be our employees or are not because they don't know of a, the different type of services and programs in place we have for um, uh, for employees and uh, the opportunity to just move up in a position. Yes, thank you. Uh, all right, so we have a f 
we have a motion and a second yet? Okay. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 601, no. Opposed. <clears throat> okay, there's one more. <laughs> no, there's oh, there's, there's more. more than one. Oh, there's, because uh, I don't, e okay, there's, there's a long, it's, it goes for a while. Yeah, <laughs> so before, it's, it's a long time before Pam Shanks. It's a long time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's a long time for her. Okay, so this is another internship permit, um, Dr. Chona Kaleen. So these are for provisional intern permits, which is different from the uh, waiver. Um, Allison worked closely with them along with her team to put together the documentation that's required so she can um, share. Um, there's, six, uh, there's six individuals that we would like to uh, submit for your review. So yes, so Adriana Briseno is going to be a SPED teacher at Watsonville High. She studied at San Jose State in so, a uh, degree in sociology. Israel Castro will also be a special ed teacher at Calabasas Elementary. He went to CSUMB and uh, majored in socio, uh, social and behavioral sciences. Uh, Jessica Carrasco is going to be a social science teacher at Lakeview. She studied at San Jose State in sociology and Mexican American studies. Um, Cynthia Froilan, Froilan, sorry, fifth grade, Hall District, she went to UCSC and majored in sociology. Mariana um, Samaniego, she'll be an RSP teacher at Freedom. She studied at UCSC in sociology and Latin studies. And then Juliette Villa Gomez is a third grade teacher, Landmark CSUMB, uh, is where she studied and she was in communications. And then the last one is on the, the next item, so oh, never mind. <laughs> Got going. I just to <laughs> Go right to 8.8. <laughs> okay, any um, comments? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. No, no, no comments. Okay, we good. Have a lot to do. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 601, no opposed. Um, so the next one, 8.7. Um, this is the to approve the memorandum of understanding between PVUSD and Davis Joint Unified School District. Yes, thank you, President Osmondson, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez. Um, this is slightly different. Um, it's a memorandum of understanding for an induction program. This is similar to the agreement that we have with the new teacher project that supports our uh, beginning teacher support and assessment um, program that's our, for our probationary teachers. And the goal of this partnership is to increase student achievement through the implementation of a teacher a quality research-based teacher induction program while nurturing the growth and development of participating teachers in a sustained and systematic manner. The um, Davis uh, Joint Union School District will partner with us to conduct an induction program for agricultural teachers that meet the requirement for the state approved induction programs. So our agricultural teachers are yes. gonna be able to do it, yeah. Okay, is there any discussion from the board? No, okay, question. So we had a great ag teacher who was new like two years ago or last year we still have her mm -hmm. and, we have another. and we have another one so will both of these t particular employees go through this induction and we feel like they need that or that's just something that is an opportunity that we would like it's yeah. both it's so both. They, they need it because they need to clear their credential and what's awesome with uh, with partnering with Davis is obviously they are big ag yeah I know we are too but community but their program is more geared for ag teachers so it, it's gonna help them do with their induction particular to their actual teaching versus a little bit just more general, which is NTP for just more of the classroom teachers. So they're gonna get more support that way. And then do we have any CTE teachers that will be going into this induction also? No, CTE, we're working with Ventura County, which okay. is where they did through the county. So we're, we're picking right up where the county left off. Julie Edwards is doing a phenomenal job working with Anna oh, in our good. office to get that going. Get so we've those. submitted a few packets to get them. So they'll go through induction in their own program through Ventura. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 601, nobody opposed. <clears throat> okay, we're still working on it. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> this time it's for um, elementary school teacher for Starlight. And it's an appointment on a variable term waiver. So this is um, the last one for Allison, which she wanted to jump into it a long time ago, so I'll let her go ahead and, and share that with you. So 
the same waiver as before for the math teacher, so it's not a PIP, but it's the variable waiver. And this one is for um, Trisha uh, Morin, and she'll be an SLP, which is one of our really hard positions to find, at Starlight, and she studied at university. Say, say what that is. Sorry, I, I, know, I apologize. The, yes, speech and language pathologist. So yeah, there you the go. Special ed department, yeah. So she studied at uh, the University of Utah in social and behavioral sciences. I don't know why you have 160 hours. Is that what she needs to go to complete the waiver or something? Where do you, where do you see 160 hours? I mean, I just got that information. I don't know why. I have so. That's the number of hours your child has to complete. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, as part of, yeah, sorry. As part of when we take on um, people on credentials, we have to also agree that we're going to support them. And that's kind of what Dr. Kling was talking about earlier that with our partnerships with. PVFT and our mentors, we were, were able to to provide that with them. Yeah, there you or go. Or to them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. no <laughs> Obviously, there's none. No. <laughs> so, um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six, six zero one. Nobody opposed. Um, this is eight point nine. This is a revised class description. Is this so? Or, it's or Pam? this is going to be with Pam too? Because yeah. I have you up here, but that's that's fine. It's several with Ex Pam, and so me. this is an executive assistant, human resources right. confidential. And thank you, um, President Osmondson, Board Trustees, Dr. Rodriguez, for your approval. This is a revised job description for an executive assistant in HR, which has been reviewed with CSA leadership and approved by the Personnel Commission as meeting the reclassification requirements, which is a gradual in accretion or increase of duties over time. Um, Ms. Shanks will go over her research as incorporated in essential job uh, functions and salary, salary relative to marketplace comparisons. Um, so what I was going to present is um, some of the changes to the position and um, why the reclass was brought forward. Um, some of the additions that you'll see on the um, attached job description are that this person um, needs to train and provide work direction to the entire Office of Human Resources, um, provide litigation support to the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, um, input on department budgets, um, implementing different office procedures, and then overseeing and training um, staff on our LiveScan fingerprint system. Um, and she also works as a liaison with the company that transmits our fingerprints to the Department of Justice and the FBI. Um, so those were some of the um, pieces as we were doing our research and our analysis of the request that came forward. Um, and as Dr. Kleen just said, that the Personnel Commission did approve this at their July 18th meeting. So I'm asking this evening for the board to approve the class description and the revised um, salary schedule as attached. So these are in her increased job duties? Yes. Position, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> okay, any comments? I'd like to make a motion to support 8.9. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> oh, still 601. She's still here. I don't have to say five. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a revised class description, and this is for adult education, and it's also a classified position, so I think Pam's going to talk about it. Yes, it's thank you. The so administrative the assistant for adult education. Yes, um, the following item is revision to a current class description. Um, the previous title was called Office, Man Office Manager Adult Education. Um, the position is currently vacant, um, which is a good time for us to look at positions um, and make any necessary changes. Um, due to the expansion of the adult education program over the past few years, which I know you probably are aware of, um, this position has changed quite a bit. Um, the position will provide leadership over the workflow of multiple office staff at multiple locations throughout the entire county. Um, it's important for this person to understand the operations of multiple school districts um, since the adult education program has expanded um, throughout Santa Cruz County and actually continues to expand as well. Um, so the revised, in the revised class description and range placement will be taken to the Personnel Commission tomorrow evening. Um, so I'm asking for the board to approve um, your portion of it this evening on the with the re, um, attached job description and salary placement there or salary you, schedule. And you haven't hired a person in that. Not yet. No, we yeah. will be recruiting when we yeah. get this approved by the board and then the commission tomorrow evening. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any comments? No I comments. Just have a question. Okay. When you do go out for um, 
recruitment, will the block grant be covering this position? Oh, would it be adult ed funding? It would be adult ed funding. Got it. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is still 601. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, and this is another one. Uh, I think I have a few more. Yes. Yeah, you have, you're, you're on here now. Yes. You're, on, you're together. <laughs> yeah. So we're in 8.11, mm -hmm. and this is the new class description for mental health clinician, and that's in child de development department. Yes, and I um, may ask Kathy to come up if you have questions about no. the budget piece. She's the, ex she's the expert in that. Um, so this is presented as a new um, class description. Um, the position will provide social, emotional, and mental health support and consultation for children and families of our youngest students with challenging behaviors. Um, additionally, the position will coordinate and participate in student services and with other mental health services in order to integrate um, early childhood education and K-6 socio-emotional mental health systems to best support our students. Um, all funding for this position is covered by the California State Preschool Contract Funds. I mean, there was some more information in the uh, item attached for you. Um, again, this new uh, job description and range placement um, is going to be placed on the professional services salary schedule, and it'll be taken to the personnel commission tomorrow evening as well for approval. So I'm asking the board to approve the job description and the salary schedule. I just have a quick comment. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hopefully, um, we can get some of those people out to Radcliffe in the hall. Anyway, thank you. Well, this one is for child development. So, in all the places where there is child development, in all the different schools, yeah, um, and th and this is, is this is pretty incredible in a way because um, it's like we have social emotional counselors for you know our high schools, and, and now we're getting it for child development. We're, so we're getting actually social emotional, if you will. Yeah, I, I don't know, know if they're called that, but th we're getting, it's almost like getting social emotional counselors for our preschool now, now that we've done it for all the elementaries and everything else. And, and there's been, and you've been able to, I'm sure Kathy knows, but there's been, there's, you've been provided additional funds to be able to do this, right? And the state level, state. Well, the state of California, hi, good evening board, superintendent, cabinet. Um, the state of California has a tricky way they're doing things with early childhood education recently. They are not giving us new money, but they keep telling us new ways we can use the money we have. And they've provided some options for training days, and then this is the, um, the other most recent one. So they're not giving you additional money on your contract, but if you have any unused contract dollar, or you can find ways to change how you enroll children, et cetera, et cetera, they're giving us an additional, it's called an adjustment factor, it's a .05 factor for every classroom. And the really remarkable thing about the funding and the way they structured it is, it's very preventative. It allows us to work with teachers, with the social, we have like a baby PBIS, it's a, a teaching pyramid, Angelica and I are gonna present on it later this year. It'll, it'll allow us to coach and, and work with teachers on that, it'll allow us to work with children with challenging behaviors, and we're really, our staffs are really struggling. We really are having very high profile children come in very young. So, um, and then it isn't like just because you have that one child, you can apply the adjustment factor to just for that one, child, you can apply it for the whole classroom. So I'm very creative and I found ways that we need that coaching. I think transitioning to school is a little bit of a mental health crisis, don't you? Okay, that whole classroom needs this person. So we're gonna recoup, um, I'm hoping to recoup close to $100,000, $130,000 in contract funds that haven't been used in other ways. So that's the funding piece. Oh wow, that's super interesting. <laughs> we're really excited and thrilled about it and the state of California is responding to the high need they see and, so and assuming, trying to eliminate expulsion. Can I? Can come. So I'm assuming this is an ongoing position, yes. right? Not just a yes. temporary yes. position. Great. And only yeah. one, one position? Well, we're starting that way. Okay. And we, we have um, hopes to expand it to also the 270 children we serve in family childcare homes. But we thought, let's get the job in, let's find out what we're doing, 
and work with our centers, at least for the start of this year, and then um, look uh, to the future about whether we would need additional positions and, and what that would so look I'd like. I'd like to make a plug that this position is a licensed clinical social worker. There are four categories of licensing. I saw that. You saw that. Yeah, I just think that would be the best tool for this I, position. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jennifer, you want to say something? No, Kim covered it for me. Okay. I'd we'll like to move go. approval. <laughs> Second. Yeah, anybody? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Kathy, for all that you do for our young kids. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 601 and no opposition, obviously. <clears throat> okay, let's continue to go here. Okay, this is. <laughs> This is another one with Pam and Chona, <laughs> Dr. Chona. So this is a new class description 8.12 for an applications analyst. So similar to the previous one that was a reclassification request, this was also a reclassification brought forward to staff. Um, one employee submitted that reclassification that was formerly a database systems analyst, and we are making the recommendation to uh, move that person to an applications analyst. Um, the new class description, range placement, and the classified salary schedule, I'm sorry, the um, reclassification request was approved by the commission at their July meeting. Um, so some of the changes to this job, um, due to the changing landscape of student data reporting to the state, the level of complexity of the job duties performed by the incumbent required a reclassification to the job descriptions you see before you tonight. Um, so I'm asking the board to approve the class description and the revised salary schedule. Okay, any comments? <laughs> All right, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor, are you gonna do it, Kim? Aye. Oh. Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, 601 still. And this is 8.13, new class description for a controller by Pam and Dr. Chona, you're both here. Yeah. So this is the last one for HR tonight. Um, so this is a new job description for a controller. Um, Ms. Shanks will go ahead and summarize the essential job functions and salary placement relative to the marketplace comparables. In addition, uh, CBO Joe Dominguez will share the need for the position and as well as the funding for the position within the business department. I think I'll let um, Mr. Dominguez talk about um, some of the, the reasoning around the position. Um, I will say that um, during the research that the salary recommendation for the position is commensurate with what is out in the market for this kind of position. Um, and this will also be presented to the Personnel Commission tomorrow evening for approval. Um, so I'll let Mr. Dominguez talk on the item itself. Well, good evening. Uh, internally, there is a need in our business of finance and accounting division to have additional support uh, for internal efficiencies. Uh, the position itself as a controller would assist the district in cross-referencing, uh, internal auditing, uh, and confirming our uh, multi-year projections, but also assisting um, in completing internal audits within our various departments throughout our district. Um, and one of the things we did have is the support of both uh, union leadership, CSEA and PVFT. Um, and it's in alignment with other uh, similar sized districts that are uh, have the same ADA as, as ours. Um, and one of the other things that it also uh, assists and supports is in some of those uh, job duties, we currently have consultants assisting the district in that. And so this also assists reducing the use of consultants and it helps build internal capacity. Um, and so overall, we will build our uh, internal capacity, hire our own, and it also uh, assists continuity, but also long-term investment uh, to making sure that we have our fiscal resources in alignment with our student achievement plan. Um, I was gonna say that, um, to Joe, I guess, because this person, you know, we usually have to pay a consultant or an auditor to come in, I would think, that we have to pay for to come in and to have our own person, kind of like an auditor, our own person's color controller, but it's kind of like an auditor, um, it would end up being 
somewhat cheaper for us and, and obviously they're there it's not somebody that's going to come in every once in a while to, to check things it's going to be a person that's here all the time can be always always checking on things correct correct, so, correct. it's a management position that it is full-time and it'll provide additional support both for my office and the director of uh, finance and our accounting uh, division so really a support of the fiscal and budget development process and then we still, uh, by Ed Code, have to have a third-party auditor uh, come in, but this actually will assist us in preparing for that audit and confirming and making sure that we have best practices implemented. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be maybe less expensive? The position itself, yes, it would reduce, uh, it would be a cost savings for the district because we're currently paying consultants in one way or another or form to do this type of work. Yay. <laughs> I have a question. Didn't a month or two ago, didn't we already hire a business analyst and a consultant? And so the position uh, that was that we provided was a business analyst, a non-management. So that was a classified position. One of the things, uh, internal weakness that the district has is we do not have um, more of the IT systems uh, analyst type position that exists in the district. Um, we currently had a management position in that role and that position was vacated, and uh, so that position was also eliminated. Um, and so that position is now a classified position at a lower level. So what will be happening to the, the consultant on, under, under, underneath that? So the, there was, yeah, there was no consultant in the analyst okay. position. Um, so the analyst, just so that you're aware, that was the person who was going out to the school sites and doing the training that Esther um, responded to so we did that as a non-management position knowing that we needed boots on the ground in order to be able to do that um, trustee Dodge is correct that we did the consultant as you'll remember with all the contracts it you approve up to a number but it doesn't mean that we have to use that so what we did is we have that consultant she actually has not used not even a day I don't believe I haven't seen her a day of that contract um, but it's according to how quickly we fill this position whether she'll come in but if you remember it was up to a certain point so once we actually fill this position then that then she will not be back um, so that's one of the ways in which we're trying to build that internal capacity. She was a stopgap, so to speak, um, until we could um, identify the process that we wanted to go through to fill the position. Okay, so the consultant, if she has it, it will be let go if we get this full-time position. Yeah. Yeah, yes, so. okay. Um, but you, I do want to note that we do need to go through um, the application process, which could take some time. So she may be present some days until the person is hired. Once the person is hired, it most likely we won't hire someone that's unemployed. I'm not saying we won't, but most likely we wouldn't. So that person is definitely at least um, six weeks out, I would say. Um, and so we may utilize her within the next six weeks as we're um, closing the books. Um, but after the point that this person is hired, um, she would no longer be present. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote no. Absolutely. Good evening, board. A uh, couple of corrections that I need to make right off the bat. So as we are in training with my executive assistant as well, I should have caught this. It indicated public hearing. This is actually an action item. Uh, so you are, you are seeing it in action, so my apologies. Um, the low-performing block grant, as you know, already went through in the spring. This actually supports that work. Um, so the monies were essentially made to do student connection, literacy, and mathematics. These pieces are being supported through Sports for Learning. Uh, one of the things that we've found in the past is that it's very difficult to secure substitutes and the amount of lesson planning time that our teachers need in addition to to be able to allow them to release 
to do these works. Uh, what we have on board is TNTP work as well as PLCs that are happening. So during this time, essentially, it gives our teachers 14 release days, both seven for English language arts and seven for mathematics teachers. It runs pretty much in a cycle of about every six weeks. We're able to merge sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teachers on the same campus in those subject areas to be able to work with not only our own internal coaches, but also the support and that sustainability of having TNTP contracts as well as the PLC piece moving forward. Um, so this kind of alleviates that need for additional subs. All of the coaches are vetted. They are fingerprinted. They go through screening by this company as well um, as making sure they're going through our fingerprinting system. And essentially our kids during that time period are going out and experiencing STEM, physical activities, other pieces that support the pieces that we already have in place. PBIS, attendance, really that well-rounded connection of even the NGSS pro, uh, pieces. You'll see two samples in there of what it looks like in regards to what a, a sample would look like in their curriculum piece of what they're bringing forward. Uh, those pieces are tied to NGSS standards as well. So you'll also see I put a piece in there about motion and stability. They're drawing that connection by the use of that, them actually using sports and indicating those factors as well. A team of us went out last spring. We looked at Salinas, which is one of our neighbors as well. Uh, looked at what their program looks like. We had the opportunity to be able to talk to not only the kids out there, which were middle school as well, but we also were able to talk to the teachers and kind of start doing some research to say, is this effective? Does it work? Um, their scalability with this has worked very successfully, but it also gives our teachers the opportunity that rather than lesson planning and us actually trying to secure the number of subs that we need, our students are actually going out and having physical activity that's attached to the pieces we're already doing while our teachers are released for us to be able to work with them on moving those early literacy pieces and mathematics pieces. So we are recommending that the staff approves this. The money is governed by the low performing block grant that was already accepted by the board. Other comments by the board? Okay, can I have Motion a to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Appreciate it. Are you gonna say no? No, you're approving. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear you say aye. Okay. <laughs> okay. This one's six zero one. And um, this is an exciting report. Um, the work we're doing that we've been chosen to do eight point fifteen with NWA Khan Academy Map Accelerator Pilot Agreement. Pretty exciting. Good evening, President Osmond, Dr. Rodriguez, and Board of Trustees. I'm very excited to present to you a MAP Accelerator um, Pilot Agreement. Um, we are one, one school district in the nation, one of five in the nation selected to be chosen as part of the pilot. Um, and the reason why that we were chosen is because of uh, last year over 90 of our teachers used the Con Mappers on a regular basis as well as um, the company was very impressed with the amount of work that we were doing with our NWA map um, data to disaggregate to look at where our students were to look at how we can differentiate within the classroom and also because of Otticelli's great work <laughs> and the partnership that she has with the different organizations. So I'm gonna turn it over to Otticelli to give you a little bit of information about the program. Good evening, Dr. Rodriguez, um, President Osman, and Board of Trustees. I'm Araceli Mendez, the math coordinator for our district. And as Lisa mentioned, we're super excited to be part of this pilot. And so I want, you know, I'd like to um, share that we will be using the Map Accelerator throughout our district in grades third through eighth. Um, on the screen, you can see the list of schools that have self-selected to participate. In partnership with Khan Academy, we presented this great opportunity to our elementary and secondary principals for them to share with their leadership teams at their site so that there could be a common agreement as to do we have the capacity, do, um, how do we best utilize this tool with our students. So those are the schools that have opted in. Um, the program overview, it's a computer-based program, adaptive based on our NWEA scores. And it will be available for our students in English and Spanish. No, I did see all the schools. 
Okay. Um, any comments? I, I just like to thank Michelle for help making this happen. I, I remember we seen the test scores and I was at Mini Way and they had, the principal handed out a cookie of the test scores going up. So I just like to say thank you. Any other comments? Jennifer, Jennifer, no? Okay, I thought you were gonna be ready. <laughs> so um, how long, is, I'll have a comment. How long is this um, pilot? Is it uh, two years, three years, one year? We are committing to a one-year pilot, and so at the end of the school year, we will be evaluating our how this program is impacting our student learning before we make a decision to fully commit for the following year. So it's a with an it's a one-year pilot with an option to continue to continue the following year. Okay, and then um, the results of this particular pilot will be publicized in a journal or how will it be disseminated to other other entities or um, we haven't discussed how it will be shared with other entities um, we know how we will be sharing it internally with our um, stakeholders so that you know we expect to see the growth that our students need so that we can um, expand our use um, one thing is that because we are one of five districts in the nation, there is a larger report that they will be sharing, and, it, and we still haven't clarified if our name will be anonymous or not. So does this particular pilot come with um, like a cash award to s implement things, or no. it comes with like free application, or? It's free what, what for us it? to use. Um, the cost that you're seeing is for the training offered to the teachers. <laughs> Do you want to add anything? Yeah. No, I was just saying you, it looks like you're, so the access to the program, so it really is what it's designed to do is to close the achievement gap for our students. So it's really looking in detail of where our students have gaps in their math learning and attacking those skills to help them boost their confidence and also gain the knowledge that they need to be at the level that they need to be. So how is this different than what we're already using? Like what makes this special? We're, we're one of five districts. Tell me what is special about us having this. So one of the most special things about Map Accelerator is the improved version of what um, teachers are familiar that they call Mappers Con Mappers or Khan Academy. So this program is so special because of the personalized instruction that it will provide for each student based on their individual data from our assessment that we've been using for three years as a district, NWEA. And so NWEA has partnered with Khan Academy to share that data behind the scenes so that teachers don't have to go through the trouble of entering data or the students. And another special feature about it is that because we um, administer NWEA three times a year, that data will be synced in those three times. And so the lessons for students will be adjusted. So for in the fall, they'll have this set of lessons because those are the gaps that were identified by the assessment. In the winter, when they take the assessment again, they're gonna have a new score, the program adjusts, and now a student gets a new set of lessons based on um, that score. So all the teaching is on the screen? For the students, yes. Okay. But it's just part of, it's, it's within their math course, so mm -hmm. students aren't sitting in front of the screen the entire time, so it might be when students are in small groups because the teacher's working with a small group on some, a different type of lesson. So they're not going to be doing ST Math and Khan Academy and other programs the same day? Correct. So if a school is using ST Math, which um, then they will continue with that. The schools that you see before you um, don't have ST Math in the grades third through eighth. So we are making sure that we're not doubling up. And as Lisa mentioned, this is a supplemental tool to support math instruction. It is not a core program. Okay. Just my concern is 
I don't want students doubling up on screen time mm -hmm. in the classroom. I already think they get enough screen time. So if this is replacing an existing screen time that they're already doing, that is my question. Yes, it is. And for a lot of the schools that you see, this is um, replacing the, be the beta version mappers or it's replacing the regular Khan Academy. I was going to ask, um, you know, I mean, I love that students are really involved in knowing how they're doing well and where they need to be improved. So I hope, you know, with all this, where students are really involved in this, that's what I want to make sure happens. And the other thing, um, you know, you, when we talk about parent involvement, um, what are the, how are the, how are the ways that we're going to be able to get parents involved in what we're doing and you know as related to this well as um, from a request from the board from last year at parent conferences um, all parents will see their students NWA map scores the um, the map accelerator is linked to the NWA um, map scores and so it's going to be linked to the data that's um, already planned to be shared with parents and within those conference teachers can share what are some of the things that they can do at home to help and where their gaps are but it is it's the same in, um, data that will be used but they're just sharing with parents during parent conferences or there's another way that parents can be involved <laughs> we also have math nights throughout the school year so there are different opportunities for the parents to be involved with it specifically with the NWA map as we're talking about looking at how the parents get the information, we are making sure that all parents get it through the parent conferences, but some schools already send out the report three times per year. Okay, to the parents, yeah. Uh -huh. I have one more question, Karen. So um, I know some of the schools do, um, with their after-school programs, do after-school um, reading intervention. Are any of these schools doing after school math intervention as well? Um, yes, and so that's one of the things that I noted on there is that we have select schools that will be using it in their after school program. Um, so right now we have two so far and um, actually we have a planning meeting tomorrow for one of them to launch. That Two schools at this point are going to use it in the after-school program. Correct. And and I would think we would hope that there would be quite a few other schools that could do it as well. Don't we? Don't we think that? <laughs> don't we think that's a good idea? Okay. Yes, we think it's yes. a good idea, and we're working with the schools. Otisili's meeting with another one. Okay. Thanks. And just one comment for me. Um, I think it's good that the online program is in English and Spanish. I think that's fundamental. And the focus on math, I know that that's where we're seeing the most holes within the achievement for many of our students. It's good that we're focusing on that. So I'm in full support of moving this forward. And with that, I would like to make a motion. Uh, second, with gratitude to um, the Khan Academy and NWEA. It's great. All right. All those in, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, six zero one. <clears throat> okay. Um, so where was it? where am I? <laughs> Eight point. Okay, yeah. Okay, this okay, there's there you go. Eight point sixteen, special edu special education. And this is a memorandum of understanding between Santa Cruz County Mental Health Department and us, obviously. Thank you, Heather. Hi. Good Gorman. evening. <laughs> Director of SELPA. <laughs> Thank you, Heather Gorman, yes. Um, good evening, President Osmondson, Dr. Rodriguez, board, cabinet. Um, I'm here to bring this memorandum MOU back to you. It has come before the board and this is a return of it because when we originally put it through there was the idea that it would have an increase over five over three years of five percent so this is showing that that increase has happened and we wanted to bring it back so that you could see that we are still moving forward and have this um, MOU with the county 
Okay. <laughs> Are there any comments from the board? No? No? Okay. Sounds like it's an easy one for you, Heather. <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 601. <clears throat> So 817 is a memorandum of understanding and facility agreement between Wattsville, Aptos, Santa Cruz, it's long now how you have to say this, adult education with community bridges and live oak community resources. And I think we've had this one from before. We did have it from before. And you yeah. probably should have it on consent. There aren't any major issues here, but you are more than welcome to ask whatever you'd like. Mm -hmm. Is this preschool? It's, um, no, it's uh, ESL classes at the Live Oak Community Center. I'd like the motion to make, to support 8.1.7. A second. Okay, everybody, no more comments. So it's, for, it's for English as a second language, yeah. Okay, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, 601. Okay, Nancy, it was an easy one for you too. <laughs> one more. <laughs> You ready for the oh, next one? Oh, you are on a one more. Yeah, we're on 8.18, 8 clinical programs approval and management agreement between Wattsville, Aptos, Santa Cruz Adult Education and Adventus Education. Oh, can we know this one too, I think? Yeah. I think so. We've had um, uh, phlebotomy before at the school, and this is a, a new group. So we are, I don't know, it's probably the first time in a while that we've had it, but we're ready. So that's what it is, the MOU for phlebotomy. And so it's a, okay. And so it's kind of, a, it's just one of your career technical education right. programs. And it's not, it's phlebotomy, it's not any of the other, the this medical assistants, not, none of we that. We already have that. those. They've already been through the clinical okay. medical assistant, the EKG program, and the, what's the other one? Um, pharmacy technology. Pharmacy I, technology. I think they've been through. If they haven't, you'll get them next month. Okay, and they all and they're going through Adventus too. No, they're not. Adventus is it's just for phlebotomy, phlebotomy because um, the clinical, the other program cannot do phlebotomy in California. Oh, and we want to offer it. Oh, so we went elsewhere. Okay. Okay. Is there any more discussion from the board? I just have a quick question. How long is this contract with this company? Year. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six, zero, one, no opposition. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's see, it's still nine o'clock, it's still early. <laughs> 8.19, um, and this is for Starlight School as well. And this is approved a letter of support to accompany a Merrill Lagasse Foundation application. You want to go ahead and get yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, great. Dr. Thank Rodriguez. You. Yes, so through our, a lot of what you'll wind up finding is the synergy that's happening um, with all the collaborations we have out there. So because as you kind of saw, because of the good work we did with NWA, we got the Khan Academy. In this case, because of the good partnership that we have with Life Lab, they put in our name for the Emerald Lagrassi Foundation um, and their teaching cooking kitchen. So they have what's called the signature program. What they do is they start out with a large number of recommendations and then you go through a process where they whittle it down. So we were originally through Life Lab, our name was put out there. We went through a two hour phone um, conversation. Um, we then had a site visit, um, all of which I was present at. And at that site visit, then they determined that we can apply. Um, when I asked during that site visit, like what percentage, because it felt like we had gone through quite a bit of work already, um, what percentage of sites or districts actually make it to receive the half a million dollars, they said close to 100%. So we feel really good. Um, this would require, we worked with um, President Osmondson to create this letter. Um, this she would sign on behalf of the board um, because 
although she is our president, we speak as a board of seven, this would approve her to sign that letter, basically saying that we do want to um, apply and um, hopefully receive the half a million dollars for them so we can develop this cooking kitchen. There were many requirements. Um, one of them was that you had to have already a full-fledged garden that was in process. So it was a limited amount of sites. Um, we, do, we did very much believe that Starlight was the best location. At this point, because of the site visit, it, the location could not be changed. It, it would have to stay at Starlight. And they have a garden, too. They do have they a, have a, a garden. garden. Um, we would garden. be putting in a, a actual, um, well, it's a portable, but it would be a industry standard level kitchen for our students. Eventually, once we're up and running, we would open it to community um, to have classes within there at night, um, and we would open up to our junior and high school students as well. Pretty cool. And you, is it, everybody knows that Emero Lagasse is a super, super famous. He's a band guy. Yeah. Uh, he's a, you, you know who Emero Lagasse is, everybody? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so we're hoping to get him over here as well. So hopefully, to see him as well here. <laughs> All right, this approval. is a motion. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six zero one. <clears throat> okay, we're at this one. <laughs> Word 820. This is a superintendent's contract renewal. And I'm going to present um, what we had to grade her on and just comments that I'm making on each of those areas. Um, so this is my report, Karen Osmondson. Um, instruction was the first one. I put she and everybody put she's really great too. She is phenomenal. Dr. Rodriguez has led the district with instructional objectives in curriculum. She implements curriculum to meet the diverse needs of students. She has knowledge of current educational research and, you know, as you well know, <laughs> the instruction for all of our students has improved greatly in her, her very small time here that she's had with us, or a little over two years. It's improved greatly. It's pretty incredible. Um, so the next one was financial. So Dr. Rodriguez actually has a CBO certificate. Believe it or not, she, she's not only a superintendent. <laughs> she has that too. And she's not only a doctor, she has that too. <laughs> she is very informed about our budget and spending. I have to say this, Dr. Rodriguez is an equal to our actual CBO, Joe R Dominguez. He's not here right now. Oh, wow. I'll tell, him uh, <laughs> tell him I said that about him. <laughs> she is equal to Joe, Ru Joe Dominguez. She is. And her knowledge of finances. And she has helped. If there has been a mistake in the budget, she has found it. I mean, Michelle has found it. Not, e not even Joe D D Dominguez. She has found it. Uh, mistakes in the budget. Um, so she is implementing a new budget system and continues to identify and solve, as I said, budgetary problems. Our budgets have remained positive at this point. Um, the next one is relation to the board. And I'm gonna talk about myself. I love meeting with Dr. Rodriguez as often as I do. I feel I have learned a lot from her on the possibilities for district improvement. And you know, I feel the relationship I have with Dr. Rodriguez is really f fabulous. And I think um, she has really worked hard with all of us um, to make, you know, make sure that she hears our concerns. And she's really good. I'm going to say this. I'm adding to this. She's really good about, you know, whenever we, one of us have said that they have a concern, she writes all these tons of notes. I see her. She's writing all these tons of notes. She's and so she's, you know, she knows exactly what our concern is, and she's, you know, she's working really hard to make sure, you know, we are, our concerns are responded to and worked on. Um, I added that part. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, relationship with staff. I'm gonna say this, um, some of the new board's members don't even know some of this, but um, we do have new staff because of Do Dr. Rodriguez's high expectations of everyone. We have new staff members and, um, and the new staff members we have have been really f wonderful people, <laughs> wonderful people. I mean, we, ha we actually have new cabinet members, we have directors, we have principals, and um, you know, in my time at the district, you know, like almost 15 years, I've never ever seen that happen before. So I'm just talking about it now. Um, she also meets with the labor union representatives very often, and she communicates effectively their concerns as well as our concerns. Um, relationship to the community. This I know about her because <laughs> Dr. Rodriguez goes to all of the festival and events, the ones that we've had at the plaza. She's been to every single one of them and we've had quite a few, obviously. We have lots of festivals and events at the plaza. She's at every single one of them, and, and, and in every single one of them, we have had a booth. And, um, you know, I, <laughs> I go to many of these, well, I go to most of them for maybe a couple of hours. Some of them I've gone to a little bit longer, but she is there all day long. She does not, she doesn't leave. She's there the whole day. So in terms of her relationship to the community, in terms of that, it's been amazing. Um, she's, um, okay, she meets with the Watsonville city manager. I know that she does that. Matt Huffiger, is, am I saying that? Huffiger. Huffiger. <laughs> she meets with him a lot, um, the city manager. And she has a good relationship with our mayor, Francisco Paco Estrada, she has a good relationship with him. She meets with him often. She emails him and she does that with Matt as well. Um, she, in terms of the community, she is at every single LCAP community meeting that we've had. And she meets with parents and staff. I mean, she's, I go to, for example, well, I'm on four committees, but she goes to my, she goes to, quite a few of my committee meetings, and she's there. I go to a lot of the committee meetings that speak in Spanish, and of course, I will talk about that part too. She's able to speak to the parents in Spanish, which we haven't had a superintendent be able to do. Um, and then, you know, we had our last year's state of the district, which we invited, you know, everybody from the community to be at, she had last year was incredibly informative and it was actually inspirational. It was, it was great. I mean, I, was, I left and I went, whoa, is this amazing or what? And she's going to have one this year as well and it's going to be in October 11th. So everybody remember that. October 11th is her next State of the District event and it's a breakfast event. Okay, personal qualities. Um, <coughs> She, you know, for example, our state superintendent, Su Tony Thurman, who I think is great, um, has recognized our superintendent for her personal qualities, and she's been asked to serve on multiple professional committees in the state. And she has been recognized by high-level groups. I can't even, I know she's been recognized other times, too, as a best practice leader. She's a great role model. Um, and then I will, s I, I just want to talk to that about this again. I mean, Dr. Rodriguez's ability to speak fluent Spanish, fluent Spanish, at my committee meetings makes a difference in her leadership. Um, and for me, she is the first superintendent that we've ever had that is bilingual. That's pretty good too. Okay. <laughs> So my summary is to thank you, Dr. Rodriguez, for making such a difference for our students. Um, because of your leadership, and you've been hearing about some of the things we've accomplished today, but um, we have been recognized in multiple ways. So 
we've already said this, but we, she already said this, but we've been recognized, selected as one of the League of Innovative Schools. We are now one of recognized. Um, we were recognized by the Stanford University Scale Project for our Latino Youth Film Institute. We were recognized by them. We were recognized by the Carnegie Foundation for our SIPS implementation. That was been so well. We are recognized by the, um, well, it's, it's NWEA. Well, it's, it's NWEA. NWEA and the Khan Academy, as as they've said today, as one of the only f five districts in all, including ourselves, in the whole nation, in the whole nation to pilot the MAP accelerator, and, and, and it was due to our effective implementation of the MAP. We were chosen because of our effective implementation of the MAP program. And then, um, yeah, and then I already talked to you about her selection by our state superintendent to be on, to help with educational priorities for the state. <laughs> As a result of this excellent evaluation, of course, I'm adding, uh, I'm proposed to adding another year to Dr. Rodriguez's current contract. I wish I could add about 10, if I could. I could add 10 to their contract. But <laughs> I, I'm only able to do it at this time, one, one year to her current contract. And we want to continue her momentum of success and hope she will continue to want to work with PVSD. Hope she will. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to clap? We should clap. <laughs> I think we should clap. Okay. <laughs> so was that a motion, Karen? Are you making a motion? I'm making a motion. Is that, that's a, that's a, it's actually, believe it or not, it's actually an action item. I'm making a motion. I mean, or somebody else make a motion. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, we can make a motion, you can make a comment okay. still. Make a I'll motion second. a second. Okay, go ahead. I would just like to thank you, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. I, I haven't been here that long, but I've seen the results. I believe in your vision. I believe in your direction. For a long time, Minnie White and E. Hall were not doing so well. But now that I am a trustee and I talk to the teachers, the principals, I see the results. I also like to thank you. That, that mountain of dirt was there for almost a decade. And I, I heard about it from the people, from the community, so help, thank you for helping me with the dirt. And <laughs> also, also thank you for bringing the glasses and the vision to the children of Minnie White. Um, for I, the whole school district. Yeah, well, I'm just, but um, I, I know how important and how expensive those could be. You know, if you don't have insurance, just a, a vision examination is easily $100. To pick out a, a cheap pair of frames is a, another pair of $100. So thank you for thinking about the children and thank you for helping all of us get that in our schools. Thank you. All right. You want to make a comment? Anybody? Can I make a comment real quick? Yeah. I just wanted to say, you know, as a first year board member, the task can be daunting. And I thank you for, like I said, always answering my phone calls, answering my questions. And I think the dust district is going in the right direction. Um, there's a lot of improvements that have been made over the years, and I like that. And I hope we continue that momentum. Yeah, Jen. And I just wanted to say that, um, you know, also as you know, somebody fairly new, what I have appreciated about you know our conversations and the com and the discussions about where the district needs to go is that students, you know, from our very tiniest students to you know our adult ed students, they're always at the center of the discussion. Even when we might have slightly different perspectives on things, I am crystal clear that that is your commitment and your stand, and I, I, I just have a tremendous amount of respect for that. Okay, any other comments? <laughs> Everybody wants your vote. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll just make a quick comment. Okay. Um, this is my ninth year on the board, and um, I'm, v I'm very pleased and um, invigorated by where this district is heading, and I want to thank you for bringing the innovation, the grants, the leadership, the vision, and the new staff that we have. 
um, in. I think um, we're go we are going in the right direction, and um, the recognition and the data uh, is showing us that we're going in the right direction. So on behalf of all the families and children, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, for me, uh, just, just really quick, two things aside from what Kim just said is the accountability piece, but then also the coaching part, right? You, uh, when you first came in, you said, you know, I want to, yes, the, the, the district needs to move in a whole different direction. And we often know that with change, sometimes there is pushback, and change in general can be hard. Uh, but yet, when you presented change, it came with, a push for additional professional development. Um, it came with coaching. So it wasn't just like, oh, here's what I need you to do and implement it. Is you provided the tools to teachers and staff to ensure that uh, whatever process was going to be implemented, it was implemented right. And with the right tools and the right support for, for teachers across the district. Um, I also want to echo what Jennifer said um, in regards to um, always a focus coming back to students. And I think, like I said, in closed doors, it's, it's, that's what keeps you grounded. I think the love that you have for this district, the love that you have for the job, and the love you have for the kids, um, I think it's what keeps you going. Um, and we haven't had that type of energy and that type of focus in a very long time. So I applaud you for your, all of your efforts and also, to the staff, right, for being open to change and for being open to uh, this learning experience along with us. Um, so, because we also need you, right? So, thank you so much, and um, I'm in full support of adding that additional year to your contract. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next zero one. <laughs> Okay, we're actually finished with the action items, and so we're not going to, we're doing now what you call discussion items. And we have our 9.1, our Youth Now presentation. Oh, there you guys are. There you are. Yeah, sorry that we took so long to get you to you. Good evening. So you're going to, I'm, I'm just going to say, the report will be okay. presented by our, your, Michelle Cheney, right? I am Jenna Rodriguez. Okay, so I don't know Michelle why it said that. It's both. We're both oh, yes. Okay, and you're, okay, yeah, no, you're there too, Jenna Rodriguez. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely here. Okay, <laughs> I was just looking at the first one. Both of you. So introduce yourself, because this is being filmed and it'll be shown on community TV, and so make sure to speak right in the mic, and then our viewers can hear what you're saying. Great. Thank you, good evening. My name is Jenna Rodriguez, and I am extremely honored to be here um, with you all as a Watsonville native and someone who grew up and went to all the schools at PVUSD. Uh, it's, this was quite an experience to be here at this meeting, and I've learned a lot, so thank you for having us. Um, I wanted to start off by saying that, as you see on today's agenda, Youth Now is a nonprofit after school center serving middle school and high school youth across the county through individualized programming focusing on academic and social emotional support. Youth Now serves 150 youth throughout the academic year, averaging 32 volunteers per semester, as well as offering 54 pro social activities, including field trips, enrichments, community service events, and family nights. More importantly, Youth Now is a place where our youth feel connected, are given that individualized support, whether it's tutoring or having a caring adult mentor who will listen, shoot the basketball with them, or just sit quietly and do a little artwork in our high school coffee house. It's where relationships are built, confidence is gained, and labels are lost. A glimpse of this is seen at our annual Cultivating Success event, which happens every May, and I would love for you guys to attend this coming year, May 2020. Um, this event brings together community partners, members, families, donors, and youth advocates of all ages. Youth Now recognizes six youth, three from our high school site and three from our middle school site in areas of academic dedication, growth, and leadership. It is here where many times our youth share with their families and the greater community just how much Youth Now means to them. I want to share a brief story of one of the students who I had the privilege of working with and getting to know for four years. 
She was brought to our high school site by her dad, who I met at an ELAC meeting at Watsonville High School, who expressed his concerns for his daughter, who was a freshman, and she was doing very poorly, poorly in school. He signed her up for tutoring, and she started coming two days a week. So she had tutoring sessions twice a week, and she would come in for at least an hour. After a month or so, she started working with her tutor and connecting with myself and other staff. Um, and then slowly she started coming every day, working on her homework, and became an independent contracted tutor, tutoring student, which means that she raised her grade above a C plus, and slowly started talking to other students in the Learning Center. Fast forward to her senior year, which was spring of 2019. She, this student was doing great in school. She was a regular in both our coffee house, socializing with friends, and coming upstairs to the Learning Center to catch up with staff and do a little homework. And she was getting ready to graduate and attend Cabrillo College. At the event, she shared how she learned to love math thanks, thanks to her tutor. She gained confidence in school and in life because she was able to make new friends. She felt supported and knew that we all believed in her. She shared how Youth Now was like a home and staff were her family, a family she came to when she had bad days or needed a listening ear and the one she ran to when she had exciting news to share. On our brochure, you will find two other quotes from students awarded this past year. And this is what we get to experience every day at Youth Now. We are more than an after school program. We are a place where our students call their own. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Michelle. Good evening, President, Dr. Rodriguez, and the Board of Trustees. Um, I'm Michelle Cheney. I'm the Executive Director of Youth Now, and I just want to extend my congratulations to you, Dr. Rodriguez, because I know, having had my own daughter in the school system here, that you've made so many great improvements over the, these last couple of years, so thank you. Um, I'm here because Jenna and I can only share a glimpse of our students' successes, experiences, and the connections that we observe in our days at Youth Now, but I wanted to extend a formal invitation to everybody that's here tonight um, to come anytime and visit our site in person so that you can see what we do as a resource for our students in this community. The students that we have enrolled are coming from all different schools. At the last count, we have 14 schools in your district. They are coming to youth now for free one-on-one -on -one tutoring, somebody checking their grades and assignments, following up with them, encouraging them, advocating for them, someone looking at them as individuals with personal needs, goals, and challenges and facilitating ways for them to get the guidance and resources they need. And as Jenna spoke about, someone celebrating the successes with them. Youth Now has the ability to pick up where a teacher has left off each day to help them on the, in their out of school time. We help them get homework done, go biking or hiking, play recreational sports, pick up a guitar with friends, study for a test, learn a life skill, or even just be in a safe space and eat a healthy meal. With this in mind, we want to be seen not only as a resource for st students, but for teachers to know that somebody will be able to help their students um, after school. Recent conversations with a couple of um, fifth grade M MSD teachers really stood out for me, and that these teachers felt so protective of their students in fifth grade about to move on into the middle school world and had not heard about us and were very grateful to hear about us so that they could use us as a resource for their parents. I'm constantly presenting information to families and school staff who either have not heard about us or have not known exactly what we do. And so Jenna and I are here tonight to ask for assistance in this area. We know that once somebody knows who we are, they have the ability to refer a student or family, like Wendy does at EA Hall or the staff do at Linscott. But for the most part, staff and families and teachers don't know. Printing hundreds of flies in this time-consuming, costly, and an ineffective way of reaching teachers and families, and we would be so appreciative of an opportunity to perhaps at the beginning of each semester be on a direct email, um, be on your peach jar, or be able to go directly to a large group of teachers. Teachers who know that a student needs more support in their out of school time can feel like there's another option. Our current families who, who are working and need their children to be somewhere after school are so grateful for us and we know that there are so many more families in this community who ha we haven't reached out to yet to let them know about us as an option. 
Our goal tonight is to be more visible, and we're looking for your assistance in showing us as a community resource for our students in the district. I'd like to um, open it up if you have any questions about us, if you have never heard of us before. Say maybe we can get an article for you in the register pod on in Todd. <laughs> um, Todd actually did write an article for us after summer last year. We hosted over 50 students for five weeks all day at the cost of $35 a week, um, running basketball clinics and doing three or four field trips every day. And he actually did highlight that for us last year. So we're very grateful to him. Uh, yeah. Okay, we just need to do another one this another year. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> this year. <laughs> well, I mean, we, you know, there's other ways we can work. We have a communication director, Alicia. She's back there. <laughs> and um, so we can, you know, work with her to get more news out about you. And each of us that are involved in the schools that we go to as in our districts can help put the word out about you, I think. And I, I, I feel like I should do more of that myself. I should do more of it myself. <laughs> and what Thank other you. ideas people have, do you have people have here, the board members? <laughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Kim. <laughs> How many, um, so essentially you serve 150 Right. Unduplicated kids. Unduplicated so kids. So we have a district of almost 20,000 kids. So if we start publicizing you, right, what, what truly is the capacity? Like, could you continue to expand based on the need if you had more kids or? Yes, we definitely can. I know that um, right now our middle school program is not, we don't have as much ability to expand um, unless we're writing up new grants, which is something that Jenna and I do so that we can expand those services. So it's, it's one of those cycles where the more students we get in, the more money we can ask for mm -hmm. um, showing that we are able to do this. And where is your location? Our middle school is at 15 Madison Street. It's across from EA Hall. And our high school site is at 31 Carr Street, which is two blocks from Watsonville High School. Just to kind of piggyback on um, your question, we, our middle school site originally, so October of 2017, we were only serving 30 to 35 students, and we were able to expand within that same building and acquire new space because of funding. So now we have, you know, close to 40, 45 every day and registered over close to 60. So not every student comes every day, but because the need was there, mm -hmm. we were able to make that happen. This is a wonderful resource for um, especially the middle school kids who oh, yeah. tend to get into trouble if they're left to their own devices or they're just sitting in front of a computer screen, you know, while their parents are working. So I think this is so neat. Some of the programming that you guys were just talking about where you had um, kids in the summer mm -hmm. and you did field trips. Michelle, can you just talk about a few of the field trips that you guys we could did. be we could be here well, for a long a time few, if I list it, them. It's all. really neat. Absolutely, what you guys do. we um, we really focused this summer on having a healthy outdoor experience. We took our students hiking in Nicene Marks Park. We took them to the beach. We brought surfboards down for them. Many of them surfed for the first time. Um, we walked everywhere. We actually were donated um, Fitbits that we were able to track all their steps every day. We averaged about 10,000 steps per day with our students, um, walking to the sluice, walking um, to play soccer, walking to the parks and using everything that's local. But we were also able to incorporate some science in, and um, we took all our students, 55 plus our high school volunteers, because we didn't have a high school summer program. So we had um, four high schoolers volunteer with us all summer and get their hours. And we took everybody up to the Exploratorium for a day. We also took them to the science workshop in Watsonville. And we had one of our um, retired volunteers came in and ran a whole morning of science experiments with all of our students. And so um, we also made it a very healthy summer in terms of all the activities that we were able to do. Um, we went bike riding with trips for kids. We partnered with a lot of other organizations 
the city of Watsonville came in and implemented a recycling program for us. Um, so, yeah, I could go on. I loved summer. I spent five weeks every day with um, 55 middle schoolers. So. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. I have a, one question. Would you, can you expand on your partnership with United Way as it relates to the um, Youth Violence Task Force? Yes. So United Way has decided to focus um, their funding on youth, so they're still doing the fi uh, families, financial stability, but it's really catered around youth because there's there's a big need here, and um, there is a, a huge population of homeless youth that we have here, and so what United Way did was they created a new pilot program, and it's based on two neighborhoods, Watsonville being one of them, and Santa Cruz Live Oak being the other. And so with this opportunity, we're actually able to formally partner with there's six organizations in total, so five others besides Youth Now that can come together and provide all of our services, wraparound services, to those that we serve. And so although you know we have students who come in and are in need of tutoring or a safe place to come to after school, we don't ha necessarily have the resource to give them the counseling or if you know they need um, substance abuse uh, counseling or information on that, if they want parent mediation, um, so we have different uh, stakeholders at the table. We're partnering with PV, PSA, the Conflict Resolution Center, Living Evolution, the Volunteer Center of Santa Cruz County, CAB for employment services. Um, and so this is really going to give us an opportunity to give back and give more to our community. So we can only, you know, we each have our specialties. All these organizations are bringing their specialties to the table and we're being able to provide all of these families um, kind of like a menu of services that they can take advantage of. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Jenna and Michelle, for reaching out to me. I, I live behind the 15 Madison Center, and I notice it's a good place. You know, there's a lot of kids in my neighborhood who don't have nowhere to go. And so now when they see the doors open, they know there's a safe place there to see. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one last comment. I know, Michelle, that uh, when we were doing the equity audit and we met with everyone, part of um, at least one of the ideas was to have some sort of bridge program, right, at the different levels, like fifth grade going into sixth and then eighth grade and going into ninth. So I think that we, when we get to the implementation process of that, if we haven't done so already, um, it would be good to be able to sort of incorporate some of what they're offering as a way, as some sort of support service in addition to what our program would entail. Yeah, sounds great. Um, our assistant superintendent of secondary, Christian Chows, will reach out to you. Great. And I'll, I'll try to schedule a visit to you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Can I ask one question of the superintendent, Karen? Yeah. We've got like contracted tutoring services through di at different agencies, right? Through with federal dollars. Yeah, so that's um, SES services, yeah. so supplemental educational services. Um, there has there's some flexibility that has been allowed on that, and so um, we now part of that is done actually through our own teachers. Okay. Um, but that that is correct that we also use outside agencies. We have tried to use our teachers as much as possible, just because they have the direct link. Yeah. Um, but that is a possibility. Yeah, if we're looking for new um, yeah. provider agencies, I think that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Whoops. 9.2 is our Saturday Academy, which I'm looking forward to hearing about. Report by Joe Dominguez, CBO. Well, good evening, uh, board president, members of the board, superintendent, Dr. Rodriguez. So this evening, just gonna give a short update on our Saturday Academy and the efforts, uh, successful uh, efforts that we took on this past year. 
in comparison to the previous year. Um, as you know, our Saturday Academy provides uh, an opportunity for extended learning to piggyback everything that's going on, all the great things that we got going on Monday through Friday, and then provide an opportunity for students to uh, continue to be uh, fed, a safe place to go for enrichment and for uh, continued education, but engagement as well, and build deeper relationships with our staff. And it's a program that's financially sustainable, and I know that was something very critical for the board when we first started it. And at the end, it's also an opportunity for attendance recovery. One of the areas as we, uh, our superintendent really um, strives on is looking at the data, making strategic data decisions. And so looking at that, we pulled up our absence calendar. And this is a visual to show and reflects that what's marked red are the most extreme uh, days of absenteeism. And so if you can look at from uh, November and the various months after December and January, you can see that a majority of those absenteeism, high, uh, absenteeism days are Mondays and Fridays. And so internally, we're also doing some adjustments. Uh, our Director of Nutrition Services, uh, Linda Liu, is implementing um, some of our favorite, uh, most popular food items on Monday and Friday to encourage students to attend uh, days, and then we're also looking at some school activities, et cetera. So this is something that we're working on uh, as part of our all in every day uh, kickoff for the upcoming year. What does uh, the Monday and Fridays reflect? It reflects about 63% of our students fall in excellent and satisfactory uh, attendance, and 37% fall in that they have missed uh, excessive absenteeism and have missed more than nine days in the school year. So we have room for improvement uh, with that number being at 37%. So our goal is to reduce that 37% and increase our 63%. Where from 18, 19 from the previous year, um, I'm really pleased we have a 50% increase, uh, 229 individual school site sessions, over 20,000 students attended uh, throughout the district, wow. and over 11,000 uh, recovered days uh, ADA. And it's the strongest year we've had. So I'm really wow. excited and pleased and commend the entire team uh, what we were able to accomplish. From the previous, and this slide's a little hard to see, but it, the graphics show that from 1718 to 1819, we had 191 sessions in 1718, and in 1819, we had 229. Um, the number of students that attended from previous year to current year, the previous year we had 12,812 students, and this past year we had 20,460 students. And the number of students recovered uh, in 1718 was 7,762. And this previous year, we had 11,805. Um, so we have, um, in those two year spans, 718,000 um, net um, across the board. And so um, from the previous year, that brought in um, $231,000. And 1819, $487,000 net. One of the uh, areas um, that I would also like to commend, and we had a big celebration here at the district for our high performing uh, school sites, and I'm going to go high school, middle, and elementary. For our top performing high school, it was Watsonville High School. They had a total of 6,577 in attendance with recovering uh, 3,471. Um, they netted uh, for the district $171,000 and they received 40%, approximately 40%, so that we were able to provide $25,100 of unrestricted money back to the school site so they could use for school supplies or for school site initiatives that they would like to support. Um, our middle school, our top performer was Rolling Hills Middle School and they were able to bring in um, 1,500 kids, a recovery of 800, and a net ADA uh, revenue for the district approximately 25,000, and that brought in about $3,000 for the school site to use on their unrestricted budget. And then for elementary, the top performer was Calabasas Elementary, and we commend their efforts. Their total attendance was 730. Uh, the total recovery was 443. Uh, to the district, uh, 13500 
and they also receive $3,000 to their site budget. And so this complements in addition to their annual um, budget that's provided, and we just like to commend the sites and want to show the reflect to the board that we're on the positive track. Moving forward, we are having um, a transition meeting uh, scheduled for Friday um, with Rick Ito, um, Greg Fry, Kristen Schaus, and trying to set that up with our team um, so that the, our student services take it and move it on and continue to grow the program. Um, at this time, are there any questions? Well, I'm just, maybe you should, I don't know, maybe it would be great for you to just discuss what are, what do they do in, in many of these, uh, I don't know if they're just completely different each time or what are the kind of things that students are coming to more often than they were last year because they like, I would think they were coming because they like what's happening at Saturday and so they're coming more often, I would think. It's the promotion of the Saturday Academy and the programs that are offered both enrichment and academic. And then I'd really like to commend um, Chona and Kristen and our HR department because one of the challenges we had was just finding enough uh, teachers and I'd like yeah. to also thank PVFT for their support. Right. So just making sure that we had the staffing available and that's something that we're gonna work on earlier in the year so that we make sure we have it set up uh, correctly for the, outco or the upcoming year. Yeah, oh, so, so yeah, so, so it's obviously a teacher has to come in and say, oh, I will come in and teach students about, who knows, um, about <laughs> how to take care of dogs or something. I mean, I'm just, I can't think of anything. So, I, so I mean, maybe mm -hmm. Dr. Rodriguez wants to speak to this? Because there's multiple topics and like football practice, marching band. I mean, there's yeah. multiple things that could happen at Saturday school, including enriching. Yeah, so um, one one example is we have students that often do go to the SLUs. So we, they go to the SLUs and they're doing scientific investigations in terms of that. Um, we do also have the students doing things um, that are art related a lot of times. Um, and we, off of the request um, from board, we also are doing um, ACT prep, um, SAT prep as well. So when we know that it's something that students really um, either need or they want, um, then they frequently come. Um, I, you know, I think the old perception was is I have to go there and it's going to be boring and, and do the work. Um, instead, they're doing things like going um, to the beaches and actually um, cleaning the beaches in, a, in an effort to understand conservation and the reason why it's a danger to have plastic cups that are um, being consumed by marine animals. Um, so I think each one is different. What I appreciate about it is that many times the teachers take their individual skill set that they don't always get to show off um, within the school day and they do it with the students. So we have teachers that are teaching students how to sew. We have teachers that are teaching students how to do um, origami, how to um, write in Mandarin. Um, there's a lot of um, great enrichment activities that um, because we do have a rigorous curriculum, there's not always time to do that. Um, and so this is an opportunity for students to have a safe place to go, be fed, um, socialize with their friends, and at the same time the district benefits um, because we have increased ADA. Um, which if we keep up the efforts, which is why there's the goal of the transition, if we keep up the efforts, then that's ongoing revenue coming into the district, which is important for us. Thank you for putting this together. I know what it's like to sit at Watsonville High School on a Saturday for Saturday school from eight in the morning to 12. Um, it, it goes by really slow and you don't really want to go until they threaten you with not graduating, so thanks. Schools used to be punishment at one point that I've been here. They used to be punishment. They, they were punishment school uh, Saturdays. They were for punishment. So students went there. It, they were horrible. Saturday schools were used to be bad news. Yeah, so <laughs> like you said, did the students want to go Saturday? No, they did not. But they were required to go in some cases. So back when we had what we had was not good. 
<laughs> I have a couple of questions, if I may. Yeah. Uh, Joe, are the number of suspensions included on the stats that you presented? No, they're not. Okay, so these are just absences. It's just absenteeism, correct. Got it. And if there's a way to break those absences for school? Yes. Okay. So we can have that. We can provide the data by school site by grade level. That would be great because is this program now in all of our schools or no? Not in all of them. We have uh, six remaining and two shared. So we have approximately five that are still remaining and then two campuses shared. So it's a little bit. And what we like to do is continue to make it fun um, mm -hmm. with enrichment, but make sure that we have the sites established, the remaining sites. Right, because it will be interesting just to see the numbers for, for school site. I would think that there would be even a stronger push for those school sites with the most absences, right? As Correct. far as, you know, providing enrichment opportunities, really selling this program um, to both the kids, but also to get the buy-in from teachers. And um, part of the LMIA is, is that's one of our number one goals, right? Working with PVFT, uh, CSEA, and us as the district to ensure that we increase attendance. So I think right now is a, a good way to get that going and looking at those statistics and really talking to those school sites and maybe getting PBFT involved in the conversation to ensure that we have teachers that are interested and um, some really amazing enrichment opportunities for those kids who are missing school. And one of the items that we always able to accomplish was we increased the, the net, so they, the sites get 40% of the net. Um, so it really is encouraging and it's unrestricted so they could use it for school supplies, art, music, um, whatever the site's needs are. So I think it's a huge benefit. Right. And yes, uh, so okay. Definitely. And then one other question, Michelle, or I'm not sure if Joe can answer this too. For um, kids at Duncan Holford on the pre-K program, do we get ADA funding for those students? What was the program? Um, if we get ADA for Duncan Holbert students. So Duncan Holbert is in, in the program. It would be, yeah. yeah. They would, yes. We do receive ADA for we them do. as well, which would be, a, there, we'd have to do work around that, but it would actually be a really good location for us to do something with because so we have too. significant um, absences. But we can work with Heather and with Michelle Shear on mm -hmm. thinking about how we could do it for the youngest students. Um, it has some complications, but it's not impossible. It just has some complications because of transportation and amount of staff um, yeah. that would be required to support their unique needs. And okay. that is something that the Looking data is also showing our high absenteeism in uh, within SELPA, but that's something that we're going to have to internally um, review right. those strategies. Right, and I would assume that even if for whatever reason we didn't receive ADA, it's still a good investment because those kids are going to be trickling in, right? Towards the yeah, state. I after I thought about it, the answer is yes, they do. <laughs> so they do? We do, yes. Okay. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Well, I'm Thank excited. You. Just a quick clarification, because I, I didn't quite catch. Is this just for students who have absences, but it's also available? Okay. I wanted to make sure I was understanding yes, it's, that correctly. Yes, it's, uh, it's for anyone, um, but more looking at the excessive absenteeism, but it's open to everybody. So I had a question. Okay. So have we ever um, asked the kids what kind of programs they'd like to see at Saturday School? Have we ever done a survey or gone into the schools to find out what kinds of things they'd like to see? I know we have done it in some of the schools because I've heard it at the student forums. I can't say that that's something that we've done at every school, so that's a great suggestion. So we can follow up on that. And the other thing I'd like to say is um, there's a lot of parents who aren't aware of Saturday Academy, so I think um, we need to do a little bit of a better job and have a plan of rolling it out because I think if more parents were aware, they would force their kids to take advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. Got some questions. Um, so part of our um, high absentee numbers is um, 
an effective way of actually capturing the kids that are actually at school. So I'm wondering, since we're doing an all-in campaign, can we talk for a minute about the, some of the improvements on capturing accurate yeah, numbers of kids that are actually in school? So are you referring to like taking taking um, role in the taking morning. role later yeah. in the yes? Yeah. So we're um, we're rolling out all of those initiatives this year. That's part of the work that we're doing, just making sure that we're taking role at a later time. That absences are actually being turned to tardies when they are do come become present, um, and then just making sure that kids, along with parents, understand the impact of being gone. Um, you know, I think for many parents, sometimes especially in the middle and high school, it can become a challenge to get your child to school when they don't want to go to school. So that's one reason why st school uh, um, student connectedness is a big focus for us for middle school, right? Um, because we want kids, we know that they're social beings, well, we all are social beings, and so we want them to be connected to school. So I've said it frequently, but my son, although he was a good student, probably it would have been hard to get him to school if it wasn't for football, right? He knew he had to go because he needed to go practice, and if he didn't go to school, he wasn't going to go to practice. Um, and so for each student, it's different. For some, it's banned. For some, it's others. Um, but I think it's making them want to go, encouraging parents to know that there's options um, when they don't go, um, and then accurately assessing them and making sure that they're labeled correctly. Um, the great thing about LMI, and we're scheduling our next meeting um, coming up soon, um, is everybody wants increased attendance. I think that that's something that we can all rally behind, whether you're doing it from the instructional side of knowing it's good for kids, or you're doing it from the financial side of knowing it's good for the district, um, or just from the social emotional support side. And that's why I mentioned it, because it's not really just about instruction, but it's also, um, if you have a student who is already depressed and then is staying home, um, they're not able to access the supports we can give them when they come to school. Um, and plus, that interaction with peers um, actually supports them versus the isolation of staying at home. Thank you. Um, so let's say we are accurately capturing attendance more properly and we increase our revenues by 2%, which I think used to be a goal. I'm not sure what our goal is now. But let's say we are accurately capturing almost everybody and then we offer Saturday school and then we, we capture back all the absences, but then there's more kids that attend Saturday school than we have absences. Can we actually use this as a revenue builder a above the level of absences? So we can only capture uh, the days that they were absent. We can't go uh, get additional days on top of that. Okay. So it's only the school calendar and the days that they were absent. So when there are a group of kids, because we open it to everybody who attend, who might not have absences on the book, are we getting ADA for those kids? No, no only the not. kids that have been gone. Okay, got it. And then one of the things that we had talked about before was offering an SAT prep class on some of these Saturdays for some of our kids. Is that ever going to move forward? We actually did it at Aptos High and at PVHS. We this offered. last year? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We offered one, one session at, um, at Aptos, and we offered three sessions at PVHS. Okay. And they were well attended. Uh, so I know how PCS does it, and it was an eight-week class every Saturday, every Saturday, I think, and Sunday. But um, yeah, one session probably is better than nothing, but probably not what we could be offering to improve scores. Well, we, we definitely want to look, I think, now that we have Kristen on board, she'll help us out. Um, but I think having a series is definitely more effective than mm -hmm. having a singleton, for sure. Um, and so we'll, we'll push towards um, making that a reality so that our scores keep going up. Yeah, my daughter attended the PCS program and raised her score 100 and more than 160 points, and it actually opened up a brand new scholarship situation for her. So it has a direct impact on families and kids that they're not adding, you know, accruing debt. Um, so I'd like to see that. And then the numbers that you were just reporting, Joe, did not appear to be 40% back to the sites. 
Um, that was the two year, um, but we have the breakdown is they do get 40%, uh, but that was the two year overall. Okay, because you said that um, one of the schools got like a hundred and over $100,000 in recovered ADA, but then the site only got 25,000. That, that, that's not 40%. Yeah, that was, uh, I believe that was one year. But all of the numbers did not equal 40%. So I'm we, wondering, what, did you report like a gross and then not the net? Yeah, that was based on the net. But we have, we did provide the 40%. Um, and one, another initiative that we did is we broke down the 40% checks by quarter. And so that's another incentive that we saw to benefit the sites. Um, so that's another option that we did. But they did receive 40%. Okay. So we'll, we'll look at the numbers and then provide you the revised um, Excel. Okay, sounds good, thank okay. you. So overall we did get 50% growth as a program and we will continue to grow it. So thank you for your support. Thank you. I just wanna really quickly, and we probably need to hurry up. Um, you know, I know one school where students are gone a lot is Renaissance, you know, they just don't show up because I don't know, it's further away or whatever, they, or they're just, their credits, they're just too overwhelmed, I don't know. But so that's one school where I, I think absenteeism is pretty high, correct? Yes, especially before last year. So last year they made a great improvement on that. Um, but it is um, one of our most vulnerable populations, and it is a long bus ride. Um, yes, yeah, it's a it long is. bus we, ride. Um, we've we've had significant conversations. I know um, at the request of um, Trustee Deserpa, we looked at having two bus routes um, a day. We looked at several things, trying to figure out how to get them there. Um, they do have a, um, you know, so. But they did increase it by about 20% last year because it was extremely low. It was about, and I don't quote me, but like 60% the previous year. Whoa. So they had a lot of students every day that didn't come to school. So in terms of, I mean, just looking at the idea of Saturday school, um, you know, I mean, for example, f figuring out, I mean, if we could figure out where all the Renaissance students are located, and if they're not located right there, if he could figure out them going to Saturday schools that are closer to the, where they live and they can almost even walk there, whatever. I mean, so the students can easily get to their Saturday schools and then they know that the Saturday schools will be fun, the enrichment or whatever they're deciding that they, I mean, like that one be a good place to ask the students what they'd like to see on Saturday schools. That'd be a good place to do it. Um, um, you know, so, you know, I was thinking, you know, how to do that, encourage them, and, and then obviously have the Saturday schools where, not at Renaissance, obviously, where, you know, where they don't have to take a bus to get to the Saturday school. They can just do it, you know, close to where they live or something. Well, I do love the idea of a satellite site. It's not a bad thought, so I, we can look into it for sure. I, I know just knowing high schoolers they want to be with their peers that they see every day. Um, so we definitely want to cluster them so that they didn't feel no, like exactly. they weren't with each other. Yeah, um, so I mean, but we a could, Renaissance we, Saturday school. Yeah, it's we could look at school, a satellite there. location. <laughs> we could look into it for sure. Yeah. I know the Porter Building's empty by okay. City Hall. Thanks. So if they're all downtown, oh. you can do it there. <laughs> yeah, the Porter Building. Yeah, it's right downtown. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so um, let's go to, can we go to the next one so we can get out of here early enough not to have to extend the meeting. Um, now we're at the number 10, which is the consent agenda, and there's not too many things that I hopefully you guys don't wanna, well, you can defer them, but of course. Um, and the only thing I would like to say that there is a donation from Julian Grant's CPA, and she gave a very generous donation of furniture, and it was valued at 12,000 for the Watsonville High School, which is cool. That's cool for them. Um, so is there any items the board wishes to defer? Yes. Okay. I wish to defer or I make a motion to defer 10.10 .10 and 10.12. 10.10 and 10.12. 
Okay. So we're going to make a motion with a deferral. Does anybody else want to defer something? Can I just make a comment real quick? Okay. Um, just, I'd just like to thank um, Michelle and the cabinet for putting 10.26, the architectural agreement for Mini White Elementary School. I'm glad that to see that's happening. Thank you. Where, where's that one? 10.26. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. There you go. Okay, so I'll make a motion. Make a motion, a motion. With I'll a second. With a deferral. With a deferral. Okay. <coughs> so um, on 10 point. Call the vote. Um, uh, so I'm calling, okay, for the vote. So I'm calling the vote with the deferrals. All those in favor of what there's left? Aye. 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 Okay, so 10. Point is the Carnegie one and the 10 point Alex one. We'll mm -hmm. see 10 point 10. So does anybody know how to help with 10 point 10? Yeah. So you want me to ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so 10 point 10, I know that we already have consultants with the SIPS program. So what exactly is Carnegie going to be doing and how is it going to be helping the program? Sure. So part of what we want to do is develop a systems map, which allows us to identify all the levers we use during this implementation to be able to utilize it in all of our other implementations. So what Carnegie has come forward and said that they wanted to do was to be able to help us develop um, this systems map. Um, so part of what they'll do, and it will help us as we're moving forward. So as you looked at our at my presentation for my evaluation, we identified three levels of teachers belief in that. Um, what they will be doing is tracking. Um, we're gonna be doing what's called um, pilots with, with pilots within a pilot, but pilots with um, saying, okay, if we do this treatment, because it's, it's gonna be research-based, if we do this treatment um, with this type of teacher, what is the, what's the result of that? And then we'll be able to help us to actually look at, um, if we did this for three weeks with this set of teachers and this set of needs, what is the result of that? So they'll actually, it'll be our staff doing the, the professional development, but they'll actually be tracking the changes that are happening so that at the end, when we're done with this, we can say, what were the key levers that we did so that we can make sure and replicate all the different levers that we did throughout the entire system to make this successful. We can then say, okay, now let's apply that to the middle school math adoption implementation. And we can know all the system levers that we actually want to do. Um, it will take pretty, it will take quite a bit of time. I think the most important thing is that we solidify it um, and from an outside perspective so that people, so that we, we are thinking of it from all different vantage points. Um, and so Carnegie came and said they, they wanted to do this with us. Um, we're really excited about doing that work um, because I think it will build the capacity of everyone around us to do the implementation and understand why this implementation worked versus others that haven't worked in the past. Okay, so your goal is to take what you've learned from Carnegie and by evaluating SIPs and then use that to implement new curriculums in the future. Exactly. Right? Okay, thank you. All right, so you, f you feel good about that? Okay, and the next one is 10.8. Yeah, I would like to move approval. Oh, yeah, we have to move. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor of that one? Aye. 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 And then we're going to do 10.12 additional. This is the one, Alex licenses. It's you. So question with this is we just discussed that we're implementing the con for grades three for eight. So are these schools not using the Khan Academy? Is that why we need additional licenses for them? And is there a implementation process to get these schools on Khan Academy so we're not paying out extra money for licenses? Yeah, so this actually, uh, Alex will be replacing um, the standard core curriculum. So what is happening with this, these and these additional 
um, licenses is that one of the hardest areas for us to fill this year has been, and when you look at our vacancies and you look at our number of interns um, and waivers, a lot of it is focused around our math and science middle school. That has been the crutch, which is really a challenge. So we have many teachers in those positions, which are multiple subject teachers. Um, that's great for classroom management and relationship building in general, because especially when you're used to working with younger children, that's a good thing. It's not as good of a, of a thing when you are doing high level math. Eighth grade math now is actually tremendously challenging. Um, and so what we're doing with these teachers, because their understanding of math is not as high as we want, we are doing parallel tracks, meaning we don't want the kids to lose out. So we are training them on the conceptual understanding of math while we're simultaneously having the students using Alex. And Alex is a computer adaptive um, program that will actually replace big ideas. So it, it's not in, it's actually not at the exact same time of doing this. The, the majority of these licenses will be at Rolling Hills. We have two um, openings at Rolling Hills for, for middle school math too. And that's a really big challenge. So while we're struggling to find those teachers, so we have, we have credentialed teachers in them now, but they are not credentialed in single subject mathematics. So we're trying to do this in an effort to ensure that the students don't lose out in the process while we're trying to find highly qualified teachers. Uh, in, other words, in other words, they're using the Alex program instead of the teachers. The well, the teachers are present. The teachers are present and the teachers still pull small group during that time. So the teachers aren't not doing anything. They're yeah. doing significant work during that time. But the base curriculum that they're using is Alex instead of big ideas. Because in order to teach big ideas effectively, you have to have a solid understanding of mathematics instruction, which generally someone with a I said generally, because not all. Generally, someone with the multiple subject credential that's slated to do elementary level children do not have a strong mathematics understanding. Yeah. Maybe that's something we can get those students partnered with youth now too for some one-on-one -on -one -on -one tutoring that are more gifted and need to be more challenged that might be some type of benefit for them to meet with a high school tutor so that they're yeah. getting that experience. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're done with the deferrals, and so we're pretty much done with the agenda. <laughs> and yeah, we're just gonna do the deferred closed session, right? Okay. Motion number one, closed session item 2.1. I move to approve the certificated personnel report as presented by district administration on August 21st, 2019, with 61 and eight additional action items. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion number two, closed session item 2.2. I move to approve the classified personnel report as presented by district administration on August 21st, 2019 with 65 and 17 additional action items. Second. We made a motion, right? Okay. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Announcement number one. The Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Juanita Aguilera as the new assistant principal of Pajaro Valley High School. Ms. Aguilera has been serving the students of Pajaro Valley since 1987 as an instructional support specialist for the Migrant Aid Program before becoming an English learner specialist at Pajaro Valley High School. Ms. Aguilera is a local resident of Watsonville and a former student of PBUSD. She obtained her Bachelor of Arts in the Social Studies, Science, and Teaching credential from San Jose State University and her Master's of Education and Administration from Concordia University in Irvine. We are proud to welcome this highly accomplished educator to a new administrative role. Announcement number two, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District is pleased to announce the selection of Michael Russo as a new coordinator of science. Mr. Russo has been serving students since 1991 as a biology teacher at Watsonville High School before going abroad to teach in Italy and Ecuador. 
For the past 15 years, he has been working for the new teacher center as a senior program director for the Eastside Alliance. He has received his bachelor's in biology from UCSC, master's in secondary of education from the University of Alabama, and is currently working as an administrative credential from the LEAP program through the Santa Clara County Office of Education. Mr. Russo brings a wealth of knowledge of providing professional development to teachers and administrators. We are proud to welcome this highly accomplished educator to his new administrative role. All right. <clears throat> so we're done. Our next board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 11th here. And I'm going to adjourn.